Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Investor Expo show for March 5th. My name is Anna, and I'll be your host today. This session will be recorded and sent to your email. Today, we are having a great lineup of four speakers for you. Thomas Carr, for the first time on our show, Eric Gebhardt, Stephen Place, and Charmin Alla Peters. So just to introduce myself, my name is uh, Dr. Tom Carr. I'm known uh, among our uh, subscribers and on Wall Street as Dr. Stocks. And I have been in the trading business since 2002, which is when I launched our first website, drstocks.com, and our first and flagship product, the Trend Trade Letter. And that's been going strong every market day since October 2002. We just celebrated our 18th anniversary last year, and uh, that has an average annual return of about 38% per year. So it's done well up and down markets. Consider we, we go long and short uh, marquee names in the stock market in that particular letter. And then in 2007, I launched our second uh, service, the ETF trend letter, which focuses on leveraged ETF le uh, exchange traded funds, inverse and uh, in a normal size, and then uh, some niche in sector ETFs as well. 2008, I was asked by McGraw-Hill to write a book on trading, so I came out with Trend Trading for a Living. Uh, much to my surprise and much to the publisher's surprise, it became a, a bestseller, translated into several languages, and is still going strong. In uh, 2010, I launched a third weekly letter, uh, the Momentum Letter, which looks at nine of the best stocks to both buy and short uh, each week. So uh, from a momentum and fundamentals basis. In 2014, I launched the Dr. Stocks options letter, which primarily looks at uh, covered calls and naked puts, but as we also buy and sell uh, uh, regular calls and puts, and we do credit spreads and debit spreads. And that's sold over on marketfi.com. And I'm happy to say that it's the number one best performing options letter on that uh, particular site. And then in 2017, we launched a sister site, drstockstrading.com. And this is aimed at newer traders, smaller account traders, and two weekly letters, the hot stocks letter, the penny stocks letter. Both have become my um, most popular letters and best performing letters as well. They come out on Sunday night and then you get a midweek update on Wednesday night. And then uh, just last year, uh, but just over a year ago, in fact, to February of 2019, I opened up a live trading room on stocktwits.com. And if you are an active trader and if you can do some day trading or very short term two to three short, uh, day trades, then that might be a, a good fit for you. So that's where I come from. I do not have a background in finance or business. I am a philosopher and theologian by trade, and I was a professor for 17 years in those fields. And I launched drstocks.com as a kind of hobby back in 2002, and it really just took off from there. It became um, much uh, more lucrative than our, my uh, meager professor salary, and I couldn't really do both at the same time. And so I resigned from teaching in 2013 to devote full-time to trading, coaching traders, uh, and trading our own account. We have a, a family fund that I manage that will be handed on to our children. And then I also have a trading account that I use for active day-to-day -day trading. So that's a little bit about me and my background. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to show you why we're very close to one of the best buying opportunities in stocks that we've seen in many, many years. We had a very good opportunity back in 2018 in December. And if you got very long and heavy in the market on that date, right around uh, Christmas Eve, in fact, uh, you did very well because the market really rallied very sharply from there. We are in a very similar situation right now. Now, we're, I don't think we're quite yet at the market bottom, but we're very close to it. We're much closer to the bottom than we are to the top. And I'll show you some reasons why I think that's the case. Now, of course, the market's been selling off because of fears around the coronavirus and 
there are still a lot of unknowns about that. We don't know how fast or how far it will spread. We do know the mortality rate is not that much worse than regular flu, but still, that's a that's a question mark. So there still is um, what we call in the trading business a bottoming process going on right now. You can, we, we're seeing that today. I mean, yesterday the market was way up. Today the market opened way down, and we're going to see that kind of thing over the next few days, maybe even weeks. But once we do reach a bottom, I'm going to show you how to build a scan. And I'm going to use a particular tool called MarketSmith. The kind of scan that I'm going to be building here in MarketSmith is a, is a scan that you can build in just about any sort of stock scanning software that utilizes fundamental metrics. Now, you can't do exactly what I'm doing in MarketSmith because MarketSmith is a product that is produced by Investors Business Daily. They have a number of proprietary um, metrics that they use to measure earnings growth, sales growth, margin rates, return on equity, those kinds of things. And you won't be able to replicate exactly that, but you can come pretty close if you use something like a finviz.com, for example, which is a great screening tool. It's actually free and it does a lot of the same things that we'll be doing here. But I'm going to show you how to build a scan in MarketSmith that will find the strongest companies trading during a market sell-off. It's my go-to scan for after the market shows a strong pullback, just as we've seen in recent trading. And then from that scan, I'm going to show you the top 10 stocks to buy for the next bull market move. So these are stocks you're going to want to jot down, put them on a piece of paper. And when, when it, the market looks like it's stabilizing and it, it's not there yet, let me, let me assure you, we're not quite out of the woods yet. But when we get there, uh, then you'll have a very good uh, list of stocks to start to buy for the next bull market move. Now, here is a chart of the S&P 500. We're using the Spider ETF or the proxy for the S&P 500. <clears throat> and this was taken on Friday of last week. So from this low, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but from this low down here under 300, we saw the Spider's zoom way down in the beginning of the day and then hit a bottom down here, which coincided with these bottoms that are marked here in MarketSmith around 281, 284. It tagged this 284 number very closely. It was about 285. And then it zoomed right back up again and closed near the open of the day. That's a reversal candle. And that would have been a very good time to have bought some stocks. That's exactly what I did with our members in the private trading room. I said, okay, we need to get long. And we did, we got heavy long, we rode up the two or three day bounce that we've just seen, which came to an end yesterday. We were able to sell about half of what we had on and we're trying to get out today as much as we can to maintain the profits that we have. Because I do think we're gonna be very choppy over the next few days. But this is what a market bottom looks like. We may not be at the absolute bottom, but we're very close to it down here. We may see a double bottom. We may see a slightly lower low to kind of flush out all the weak hands, all those new longs that just got reamed again by the uh, by their stop losses being triggered. But I do believe that we are very close here. Anything under 300 is going to be very close to a good solid market bottom. Now, a couple of things to point out on this chart that tell me that we are at least close to the bottom, if not at the bottom. And one is the volume. You are not gonna see volume like this unless you go all the way back to uh, 2018, that December sell-off that I mentioned. Um, in fact, we have it right here. Here's the 2018 bottom, around 233. And you can see, you can't see because there's a, the uh, little tag on the, on the chart explaining this cup and handle pattern. But underneath that tag, you'll see a few uh, big bar volume spikes. The volume that we saw here in February, right at the end of February last week, is the highest we've seen since the 2008 market crash. So that is uh, a very solid marker that we are very close to, if not at already a bottom. Another thing to note, as I mentioned before, is that we tagged support, very key pivot support. 
We saw the market back in September and October fall from 302 down to 284, and then it just took off from there over the next several months. We're back down to 284. We at least we were hit. We had 285 on Friday intraday, and that whenever we get down to support on heavy heavy volume, usually marks a significant a significant bottom over the near to long term. And the third thing to note is that we had six days of constant selling. This right here is an historic market print. You will not find any six days in a row that were any worse than what you're looking at right here. This was the worst six consecutive days in market history, if you can believe that. Going all the way back to 1800 and something, whenever the records were first kept, I think it was 1920 something actually when records were first kept. But ever, you know, going all the way back there, we, you can't find another six days that shows such a steep sell off. So again, those three things together tell us that, hey, we're at an historic low. This is not a time to be getting defensive. This is a time to be getting offensive and uh, in a very, very good time to be putting together a great buy list of stocks. Now, a quick look at the weekly chart of the S&P 500. Here's that big red spike. You can see off to the right edge of the chart. So five of the six days are represented right here in this red spike. Heavy, heavy volume. And if we put um, some channel lines over the tops of the highs, you can see that it parallels a channel line on the support side of things down at the bottom which again gives us a clue that we very well may be at the bottom of support. And then we also note that this volume spike here, we do have on a weekly basis, a heavier volume spike back in September of 2015, but we have to go all the way back there to find a weekly volume bar that is as high as the one we just witnessed. And you can see that whenever we have these um, major volume spikes on the downtrend, uh, this is an important thing to keep in mind, major volume spikes on the downtrend tend to mark the bottom. And you can see we had a volume spike back here, September 2015, the market took off from there. We had another volume spike, March of 2018, the market took off from there. We had another big volume spike, that, as I mentioned before, the last week of December of 2018, very nice multi-week, multi-month rally from those lows. We're at the same point again. If things could get worse, of course. The market can always do whatever it wants to do. The market can set more historic lows, the highest volume that we've ever seen, and all those sorts of things. But from an odds basis, we are at a significant market bottom by all accounts. So here's some additional reasons that we should be buying stocks now, not looking to get defensive, but looking to get offensive. One is that the yield curve is steepening. Now that, that was the main reason why we sold off in December of 2018, right? Everyone was saying recession, recession, recession. When you have a flattening yield curve, when you have an inverted yield curve, economists will tell you that those things usually portend a recession on the horizon. They don't always do that. You can always get inverted yield curves and no recession. You can get a, a perfectly fine yield curve and still get a recession, but there is a correlation between the two. So everyone got very afraid that the market was uh, going to collapse because the economy was, was condensing rather than growing and turned out to be fake news. <laughs> so as so many things are these days, turned out to be real fake news and it was a perfect time to buy stocks. The yield curve is no longer flattening. It is starting to steepen again as it should in the condition like this. Um, here's another thing to consider. On that Friday low print, when we got down to the bottom 285 on the spider, if you looked at the number of S&P 500 stocks that were trading above their 10 period simple moving average, there were only two, two stocks out of 500 that were anywhere near above their 10 period moving average. 498 of the 500 stocks were below that period. 
And this is what's called a market internal marker. So if you study, um, you know, the dynamics of tops and bottoms in markets, you'll know that that kind of a read, that very low level of stocks above their 10 period moving average coincides very often with a market bottom. This happened to be the lowest reading in history. You can imagine that. So again, it looks like we're at market bottom. The fear and greed index, which is something that CNN puts together and it, it covers things like the VIX uh, index, which is the volatility index. It covers market internals, it covers volume, it covers uh, retail trader sentiment. You know, are they bearish, are they bullish, those sorts of things. It hit 12 on Friday. It actually went down to 11, I, I, but I wasn't watching it at that time. It hit 11 intraday on Friday which is an extreme level of fear. And usually, again, anything in the near single digits usually marks a market bottom. Another thing to consider is that we're now in March. We're at the beginning of March. And March and April are the two best months, seasonally speaking, for the market. Your best returns tend to happen in these two months. Um, China stocks are holding steady. In fact, in the midst of our market meltdown today, the China index, the FXI that you can follow on the stock market is up. And it's holding, it's been holding steady at, uh, at sort of a mid range, hasn't hit bottom at all. Part of the reason is because the government is devaluing the Yuan and the government is um, you know, pumping some money into, into the economy. Um, and that helps, that all helps. But the fact that China is the center of the virus outbreak and has some of the worst statistics on the virus, and yet their stock market is doing just fine. In fact, last week, the Chinese index was the best major market index of all the market index. All the European, the United States, everything else did far worse than China last week. So that, that tells us something. That tells us that at least um, people aren't worried that the situation in China is going to get any worse. <clears throat> The Fed is likely to cut rates in March. Now, I wrote this prior to the surprise 50, point, 50 basis point cut that came yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before? Anyway, a couple of days ago. And um, the market shot way up and then it shot way down in the same day. It was just a wild and crazy trading day. Now, they have cut rates down to about 1.25%. They still have a few more bullets in the magazine that they can use at their March meeting, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. All odds are saying that they're gonna cut at least 25 more, if not 50 basis points more. And there's the old rule, you never fight the Fed. The Fed putting money into the market, putting money to work, giving um, you know companies and corporations the ability to borrow money at a lower rate. All of that is very bullish for the market. And lastly, I just want to remind you of Warren Buffett's number one rule, buy when everyone is selling and sell when everyone is buying. If you can keep that in mind, you are in good shape. Okay, so let me uh, end this slideshow and I will put up now the MarketSmith software tool that we will be using to build a scan and find the market's 10 best stocks to buy after a major sell-off as we've seen. So we'll open up the screening tool over here. I've already got the screen inputted into the software, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give away some of my secrets here. I'm gonna show you, in fact, the, um, the parameters of this screen. I'm gonna open up the editor and you will see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine filters in this scan. Now let's go through these one by one. So first of all, I'm looking for stocks that are priced above $15 per share. And I normally would put this a little bit higher because uh, the higher the price of stock, the less likely it has been hurt and damaged by the pullback. When you get a major market pullback like that, it's all the little stocks, the small cap stocks, the micro cap stocks, the penny stocks that tend to fall the farthest and the fastest. And so we, we want to avoid stocks that are just have, that have been slammed. Um, I'm going to actually set this uh, price to uh, a little higher. 
So instead of 15, I'm going to put it at 25. Because we did have quite a few stocks pass through our filter, 92 now. So that's still a little high, but we'll, we'll whittle it down in just a moment. And then I have the 50-day average of volume at $500,000 per share. So we want liquid stocks. We don't want stocks that are thinly traded. Those stocks that are thinly traded tend to be the stocks with um, smaller floats. They're far more sensitive to fluctuations in the market, volatility in the market. We want to rule those out. Then we're looking at stocks that are showing a weekly closing range of greater than 50%. Now, what does that mean? It means that over the past week, let's say a stock has traded between $10 per share and $12 per share. So that's a $2 range over the last week. Now, this filter will only give us stocks that are going to be trading at $11 or higher. In other words, uh, halfway within that range, you mark the halfway point, and then the stock has to be above that on a closing basis to pass this filter. So if a stock traded between, say, you know, something like a Tesla, it traded between 700 and 800 over a given week, then Tesla is only going to pass through the filter if it's trading at 750 or better. I hope that makes sense. But that's, we're looking for stocks that, that, are showing some relative strength within their own trading range. That's a good thing. That's a bullish thing. And then on a daily basis, we want a stock that is in this in the top 30% of its daily range. So we want a stock, we're, we're only going to buy it on strength. And we want to make sure that the day before we buy it, or the day of, if you're running the scan in real time, this is a real-time software service, uh, during that day, it is trading in the top 30% of its daily range. So you take the low of the day, you take the high of the day, and it should be somewhere in the top 30% of that range for, to pass this filter. So at this point, we have 293 stocks passing our filter. Now, this is something that is only, um, you can only do in MarketSmith, and I'm using their comp rating, which is a figure from one to 99, one being horrible, 99 being as good as it gets. And this is a comprehensive rating based on all of the Investor's Business Daily proprietary metrics. So you've got their growth filters, their sales, their return on equity, everything in the mix goes in there. And I'm putting stocks at an 80 or above, but because we have so many stocks coming through our filter, I'm actually gonna shift this to 90. And let's see what that brings us down to. That brings us still, we still have 71 stocks passing this scan, and that's fine. And then percentage uh, change during the current week. We're looking for stocks. This actually is the reason why we're getting so many coming through, because we've had a bounce in the market. So all the stocks passing our filter are trading at greater or equal to a negative 5% over the past week. So these are stocks that have lost no less than, i sorry, no more than 5% over the past week. That's a little high. So let's change that five to a two. So we're adjusting the scan as we go to fit current market parameters. That's fine. That gets us down to 60. And then the SMR rating, now this is again, something that's proprietary to Investors Business Daily. This is their, uh, the S stands for sales growth. The M stands for margins which are hugely important if you want a good safe stock in a market meltdown. And the R stands for return on equity, which is a the one of the fundamental metrics that determines um, the IBD top 50 stocks. So you put those three together and then it, it puts, out, put, puts out a letter for every stock from A to E, a, E being worse, A being best. And I have it either, as either A or B, but let's just look at the A stocks and see how many that gives us. So now we're down to 41 stocks. Now that's a very good number. I like to start with 40, 40 to 50 stocks and cull from there. Now we have all the stocks down here below and they are, I'm not sure what they are ranked in order of, but what I like to do first is I like to go over here to the comp rating and start with all the 99s at the top. So our, sorry, that 
did just the opposite of what I want. There are the 99s at the top. And here we have some familiar names. So let's put away the screen and <clears throat> the parameters, the filters. And here we have REGN, which is a big biotech firm, um, large cap. A lot of good things going on in this chart. Obviously, this stock has not taken anything like the pullback that we saw in the S&P 500. It's just you know, dancing to its own drummer right here. And it's up here at uh, at least significant highs, if not all time highs around 500. Now this is would not be the kind of chart I'd be interested in unless it did a little bit of a pullback. Uh, it hasn't been doing that yet. But one of the things I like about this chart is that over here, if you look at these two figures on the left, you'll see a 15% with a green triangle, 7% with a green triangle, Anytime you see double digit numbers with green triangles, that is a very, very big plus for this company. That means that in 2020, they have raised their earnings estimates 15%, which is significant for a big cap stock. And then looking ahead to 2021, they're so positive on their earnings potential, they raised those estimates as well, 7%. I love to see two green triangles. If I see one green and one red, that's also good, but not great. If I see two reds, unless I really, really like the chart for other reasons, I'm going to avoid it. And one of the things I should point out about MarketSmith too is that it has its own entry and exit signals attached to the chart as well as pattern recognition. And so whenever you see this blue box, that is the buy zone. So any anytime the stock is in that blue box, it, you should be buying it. When it's down here in the pink box, that's the stop loss. So that's where you would sell it to cut short your losses. And up here is the green zone where you would be taking your profits. It's usually about 20% above, not always. Um, so if you had bought it down here around 400, you would be selling it up here at about 460, it looks like, at least 470, which of course it hit just a few days later. So a nice, nice little trade there. Um, but REGN is not going to be on your list, but this one should be on your list, VRTX. Uh, now, I'm sorry, it does have two red triangles, which I didn't see until just now. So let's hold off on that and let's get to one that has, there's a good one, Adobe. Okay, now Adobe has some good stuff going on. You've got a Stochastics oversold. You've got the two green triangles. You've got a uh, dip down into the blue box or a little bit above that, but this would still be a nice looking chart to buy. Uh, NVIDIA is one that I put my members into um, last week on that big Friday dip. And this is one of my uh, long-term holds, but I like to buy shares. So this would be number two on your list. <clears throat> and then uh, DHI is one that we've been in as well since the Friday sell-off and it bounced nicely off the 50 period moving average. Now it dipped down into this stop loss area, but we, we, aren't, we weren't in the stock at that time. This was a very good place to buy it. And you've got the double green triangles, you've got the stochastics in an oversold fashion. It's a little bit uh, above where we bought it. We bought it around here 52 and it's now at 58, but it still has quite a bit of room. It's back into the blue buy zone your green target is way up here. So this would be a nice stock to add. So we've got Adobe, Nvidia, DHI, Dexcom is another one that was on our list last week. And I really like this chart. You've got the double green triangles. You've got a little push off the 20 period moving average, which is rising after filling this gap. That was an earnings gap. They did ex excellently well. And you've got above average volume of all throughout this little consolidation period. This is a very nice looking chart. So that should be on your list. Uh, EDU is one that we bought a couple of days ago. It was underwater for us, but it looks like today it's bouncing back. Um, EDU has had, you know, it's a uh, Chinese online educator. And so because of the Chinese contagion, it's been a bit suppressed but I do feel like it's going to have a very nice run from here. It has been, uh, it's showing above a double digit raising of estimates, but a little bit lower than what expectations were, which isn't always a bad thing because when a company 
um, lowers their expectations and then surpasses them on the earnings report, you tend to get a very nice bounce. So it may be just sound management. I would put EDU on your list. Um, Trex is a company I don't know, and I would not be looking at this chart in any case because it's still too high. Um, let's go up down to Paycom because this is one of my favorites. We've been in and out of this chart for uh, several months now, and uh, we did buy on the Friday dip. It hasn't gone very far yet. It's still in the buy zone. This is a perfectly looking, a perfect looking chart here with the um, sort of a double bottom dip and it's still hugging the 50 period moving average. It has excellent fundamentals. Again, we do have double red triangles, but we've got a 99 on the EPS rating. You've got an ASMR rating. You've got a comp of 99. You've got a timeliness. That's their technical rating of A. Uh, growth rate is 80%. It's hard to beat that. So it is just a very good one to hold. So um, let me do a couple more and then I'll get to some questions. So Sedge is a solar company that uh, we don't have any shares of right now. It's a little bit extended, but let's look at LITE, which is a good one to get. So this has the double green. You've got a big dip below the 50. It, re it uh, returned back above the 50 and is still continuing up in a weak market today. It's doing very well. This is a good stock to buy and hold for several weeks going forward. And then lastly, AYX has been on our buy list for a while. I own shares of it long-term, but I do like the fact that it held above the 50 period moving average. It tagged it a couple of times, and now looks it looks like it's back into the buy zone. It looks like it's about to start to take off here above 150. So those are the stocks I would recommend to buy during and after this bottoming process of the market. Keep in mind that we may not be at the bottom just yet, although I do think that last Friday printed the absolute bottom. I do think we'll probably have a test of it coming up sometime. And at the very least, we will have days like we've seen today and yesterday where we just have choppy mess, just a choppy mess. Okay, so let me take a look at uh, questions, if there are any. Does anyone have any questions for me out there? And if not, then um, what I can do, uh, someone is asking about Tesla. If I can open, um, can I get alerts on EMA crossovers on individual stocks? This is one of the questions that come in. Can I get alerts on EMA cross crossovers on individual stocks? in one five, 10 minute charts for a watch list of stocks? That is a very good question. And that is not something you can do in MarketSmith, but I'll give you the name of another tool that I do use for just that very thing. And that is Trend Spider, Trend Spider. And I believe spider is spelled with a Y. If you go to trendspider.com, uh, you can take a free trial. Please tell them that Dr. Tom Carr or, or Dr. Stocks sent you to them because they will give you a free trial as opposed to a low cost trial. And um, then uh, you try it for a month and see what you think. You can program in on a watch list of stocks, MA crossovers. And the, the crossover that I prefer is the four EMA and the nine SMA. You, you'll see if you put that onto an hourly chart, a 15 minute chart, five minute chart, it gives you some excellent entry points. The four EMA, the nine SMA. You plot that into um, TrendSpider, and it will give you alerts, real-time alerts on any chart parameter that you want. Going to your phone, you'll get an audible alert on your computer, all kinds of ways you can be alerted. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you wanted to take a low-cost, it's $19, I think, a low-cost trial of MarketSmith, please send me an email and I'll send you a link to a low cost trial. Otherwise you're gonna be paying, I, I think it's $100 or something per month, but I, I can get you in the first month for $19. Send it to drstocks at drstocks.com and I'll get you set up with that. Uh, someone asked about Tesla, which is a stock that I bought some calls on today. 
which uh, haven't been doing very well just yet, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, they're just near-term calls, so it's kind of a fun money trade. Tesla is a stock I've been in in my long-term investing account since uh, I think it was November of 2015. It was down around $170 per share, so we've been very happy with it as a long-term investment. And I do think Tesla will be going higher uh, into next year. They've just got all kinds of cool things up their sleeve, and it's not really a car company. It's an artificial intelligence company, among other things. But uh, the, the car company is just kind of a side gig to get people in the door. It's the ultimate sales funnel, really, when you think about it. But anyway, it, it's a great car, too. It's like the number one car, right? You've got to have a Tesla if you're interested in uh, EVs and a car that will hold its resale value and all kinds of cool gadgets and that sort of thing. It's just an amazing car. So, um, uh, so Tesla had a very nice bounce off the 50 period moving average. This would have been an excellent place uh, on the dip to near 600 to have gotten on board. We did not because we were watching other things. It ran all the way back up to 800, huge, huge win for call buyers. And it's pulled back down, tagged close to 700 early this morning. And that's where we put on some calls. Now we might be a little bit up by now, but uh, maybe not, it's hard to tell. So it, do I like Tesla going forward? Yes, I do. Um, I do like it as a long-term investment. As a trade, you just have to be very careful with it because it can open up or down. As you can see here, it can open up or down several hundred points. And you know that will just wreak havoc on your options trade. It's, it's a hero or zero when it comes to Tesla options. Okay, let's see. I don't see any other questions here other than those two. Uh, sorry, uh, someone was asking how much does Market Smith cost? So if you uh, use it at the full price, you're paying $100 um, or so. I, I forget what the price is just now. Um, I'm, I'm a partner with IBD, so I kind of get the whole package for free. <laughs> but I can get you into a monthly trial for 19, I think it's 19.99. Just send, send me an email, and that's a very reasonable price to give it a go for a month. See if it doesn't improve your trading. Now, it has improved mine greatly. So many times that I, I thought, oh, I really like this chart. That's a perfect technical setup. And then I'll put it into MarketSmith, and I'll take a look at the metrics. And you know they don't line up. Um, you, you've got a, a D for the SMR, like Tesla here. <laughs> you've got um, uh, you know uh, this accumulation distribution rating. Tesla is an A because it's a very popular stock. But if it's down or a D and or an E, you want to avoid that kind of stock because that's that means people are selling it, not buying it on average. Um, so those are the kinds of things that will keep you out of very good looking trades that if you were just looking at the technicals, you would have been in otherwise. So it's worth the, the um, it's worth it for that. But then the screening tools I mentioned is excellent. Now, here's another thing that you can do in Tesla. Let's go back to Paycom, which I really like and will be buying probably more of today if it can hold above the 50 period moving average. And let's say I like Paycom and I'm, I really like the sector that it's in, but maybe Paycom isn't the number one stock in the sector. So what is? So I click on this view stocks in the industry and it will rank them according to comp rating among other things. And we can see that it's actually not number one, that Paylocity is number one. These by the way, are software as a service companies that do a lot of their work in the cloud, so they qualify as cloud computing plays, <clears throat> but mostly they're SAAS plays. I like to keep those separate, and they're in the HR space, the human resources space, and as long as we have full employment, which we do now, these stocks, these companies will be in much in demand. Now, this actually is a nice looking chart. You've got one green, one red triangle, but the green is a 31% and it's for this year. So that's more of a concern. You've got stochastics and oversold condition. You've got a reclaiming of the 50 period moving average. That's very good. Uh, looks like it's gonna be running a test of 150 here soon and it's only at 136. 
So you could see a 13, 14 point move in the very near future, market willing. So I do like that. But one of the things I like about this feature is you click on this view stocks and industry and you like a stock, but you wonder, is this really the best in the industry? Maybe it's not. So then you can find one that is. You also get some other ideas going down the list. So, you know, ServiceNow is, of course, a, a must own stock in the space. Um, ZM has been just crazy, crazy stock because it's considered a virus play. Uh, it, it manages um, you know, telecommunications for people that work from home or want to telecommute or video conference. And it's got a, a proprietary set of tools that no one else offers. It's just an excellent, excellent long term investment. Um, We've been trading it. I don't have a long-term position in it. It really flew high today on the virus scares and unfortunately without us because we weren't in it, but it is a very good one to have on your watch list. So that's another tool that I really like about MarketSmith. Uh, let me see if there are any other questions here. Uh, someone posted a link, thank you for that. But, uh, and then TrendSpider is spelled with an I. So thank you for that. Uh, do you need an EIBD subscription to join MarketSmith? No, it's a separate service. So you will sign up for that separately. And if you sign up for MarketSmith, you will not need the EIBD tools because you, you just won't. Everything that you find in EIBD, like the top 50, <clears throat> the best IPOs, the best top 20 big cap stocks, those are all in MarketSmith, all those lists are in MarketSmith in addition to the ability to um, scan. Uh, you, hey, you mentioned Finviz earlier. It was about a charting source. Yes, finviz.com is uh, my go-to tool for very quick screening. And um, I also keep watch lists of stocks there uh, just as a quick glancing kind of thing because it will give you a, a whole list of fundamentals underneath the stock and it gives you some technical charts and it's just a very very nice free tool it's not real time the scanning tool is not in real time so it's not as serviceable if you're a quick turn trader but it is a great tool to use uh, you can you can subscribe to it i think it's about 40 dollars a month and you will get real real time data that's the only difference everything else is uh, fully functional as far as i know in finviz how would you find stocks to sell in a sector? Well, that's a very good question. Okay, well, let's say that we're in this sector, this software sector, SAAS sector. We have them listed by um, comp from high to low. We just can reverse that and go to the top of that list and you'll see here's a stock rated at nine, 11, 13, 14. And if you go down the SMR, which is my favorite metric in MarketSmith, you've got an E, you've got a D, E, D, D, E, E. These are all stocks that are hurting big time. Now, most of these are going to be uh, stocks that are down low, like that one or this one, right? These are stocks that are already uh, you know, su suffering from uh, short sellers and from investors leaving the company. So you'd want to go somewhere kind of in the middle of the list to find something that still had some potential to the downside, something like this. Or, uh, well, that's that actually could uh, pop below this 60. It's starting to test that support level there. Manhattan Associates looks like it's printing a little bear flag. It could continue down below 60. So those are the things you would you would do. This one I know is a favorite of some short sellers of that I know. Um, it's forming this bullish top and handle pattern as recognized by MarketSmith, but it has some problematic fundamentals that, uh, you know, too much competition. And it's forming this little bear flag here. So SMAR is one that uh, could be further down uh, a few weeks from now, especially if the market is weak. So that was that's what I would do if I were looking for shorts. I do have in my... Um, screening tools that I've built. I've built all of these uh, different uh, scans and I do have one that um, I use to find shorts that are very, very strong in relative strength, but with very bad fundamentals. 
you have to be careful because some of these are biotech stocks and you never want to short a biotech stock when it's showing strong relative strength because anything can happen. But something like this, the Chinese Starbucks company, Lucan, is, uh, I, I'm not sure why it's been holding up so well. The fundamentals don't uh, are not very good. But we're actually long this uh, as of yesterday uh, as a short-term trade. But, you know, we're, we're short traders. This one I just uh, bought this morning as a day trade and got out at 135. I bought it at 127, shot up to 135 within minutes. It was just a crazy run. And then we got out. That was in the live trading room. Uh, but again, these are the kinds of things you could do if you wanted to short. Okay, so I think our time is up. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We're going to talk about high probability trading in all market conditions, strategies for up, down, even flat markets. We've got a secret strategy. You've probably never seen it before because we've uh, we actually gave it a clever name. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about speculation. Remember, we are speculators. We accept risk, just like the Duke brothers there with Valentine training him in commodity trading. So we look for price movement hoping to profit, but we do accept risk. So it is important to take a moment to look at that risk disclosure. Okay, and really the key thing there is there is always risk in trading, only risk capital should be used. So our goal today, we're gonna reduce your anxiety, talk about autopilot, how we can use technology, one-touch trading, and look at some non-correlated strategies for all market conditions. So here's what we're gonna look at. A little bit about what's happening in the markets this week. Three common barriers. We're gonna look at stock market indexes and individual stocks, talk about probabilities, have live, a live demonstration and uh, trade alerts, a special offer, and then some FAQs as well. So what is happening this week in the markets? Well, as you know, there's been a huge spike in the VIX, uh, Federal Reserve emergency intervention, uh, record low treasury yields, uh, uh, Sanders loses his lead, and of course, coronavirus continues to make headlines. So this is interesting here, right after the emergency Fed intervention, you saw a big spike on the S&P 500. We follow the E-mini S&P 500, and you'll see why in just a bit. And then of course, uh, it promptly gave back all those gains and then a lot more just a couple of days ago. And what happened here? Treasury yields hit record lows, sign of anxiety. So that's a risk off environment. Money's rotating out of risk assets into what's considered the safest asset class, US treasuries. Article here said it smells like panic, not what Chairman Powell had in mind. So I think that's a fair, fair statement. Um, and the market's fearful. Looking at the VIX, it was um, really doing not much of anything for a long time, around 14, 15. And the market sensed trouble here with the coronavirus and just recently uh, spiked here to about 40. I think we're around 37 or so today. So here's the fear and greed index. If you haven't seen this before, it's kind of interesting. CNN, we are now in that extreme fear zone. And look at even gold. It was up um, almost $40 after that 50 basis point rate cut. And then here's what happened after Biden took the lead over Sanders. Right around here, I think, is when it sort of became clear that he would win, win the uh, delegate count and market just ramped up. So it liked that. On the other hand, uh, today we're kind of giving back the, <laughs> at least uh, a big portion of those Again, this is a five minute chart, so a lot of volatility. Uh, you can see your daily chart on the S&P. Uh, we had a high here and we've given back, oh, I can't remember what percent that is. Was it 15? So something like that, 15%. But anyway, we're right here at this 50% retracement uh, in this area here, 31.25. So it's kind of a key zone, but Anyway, kind of inter interesting to look at the weekend review. So it's enough to give you a headache, but we want to trade the environment that the market offers, not fight the tape. Remember, markets are always correct. We aren't, it can be expensive trying to convince the markets that you 
are correct and the market's not. You don't want to scream at your screen. Uh, the prices don't care. So Ed Sequoia made that comment. Great book called Market Wizards. If you haven't read it, I would recommend it. So we have a new approach. We don't need precision. We can do it just minutes a day. There's a margin of error and it's bull, bear, and flat markets, something new. A little bit about us, we're AltaVest since 1997. We've been introducing brokerage firm and all of our staff have been in business at least 25 years. Picture of us and some of our colleagues on the trading floor a few years ago, we took that. Here's another picture I took. That was, I think, at the uh, Coffee Sugar Cocoa Exchange. A lot of fun down there, um, kind of a, last from the past, but we've traded millions of contracts over the years and we're located in California and Illinois. And who am I? I am Eric Gebhard. been doing this about uh, almost 30 years. Since 1991, I've been in the business and I have my BS in business administration from the University of Southern California. And how did I get started? Sometimes people ask, so just for what it's worth. Uh, I had an investments course, There, there's my book, I actually found it earlier last year, um, the proverbial dusty book on a shelf. So we're looking at options, those are my notes there. We were looking at uh, crude oil at the time, kind of an object lesson because it was happening. The oil fields were burning in Kuwait, thanks to Saddam Hussein, it had doubled in value. So that's what we were studying, I thought it was fascinating. I did become involved in the securities industry with my securities licenses, mutual funds, so on and so forth. But I certainly liked futures and options better. So I was able to get hired at an options trading firm. And that's where I cut my teeth on spreads and strategies and, and volatility and so on and so forth. So three barriers to trading success. This is what we kind of think gets in the way. Day-to-day -day noise. And by the way, that picture there, that's um, a nice toy we have in the office and all the kids come in, they love trying to figure out what to do there, buy, sell, or hold with the ball. You, know, you kind of move that around, so it's kind of fun. Anyway, so here's all the noise. The Fed will save the market. Um, the coronavirus is still with us, but Wall Street will get a bounce this week. Uh, meanwhile, here's uh, Rubini, he says stocks are gonna drop 40%. So a lot of noise and it plays with our emotions and creates a lot of anxiety, hope, fear, greed, anxiety, you, know, you name it, uh, you've all been there. So we have bad wiring. We all tend to sell the lows and buy the highs, unfortunately, we've all done that. According to Mark Lindheim, I, I would agree. I think we've all done that, just the way we're wired. And there's bias. We come into the markets with our own biases. And this is a nice little piece here from, uh, I think it's Motley Fool. Yes, Motley Fool. So confirmation, anchoring, and recency bias. Let's talk a little bit about recency bias. Here's an article in the Wall Street Journal called the Morning Star Mirage. They rank mutual funds. Notice here that actively managed mutual funds, five-star funds come, become three-star, one-star funds become two-star funds. So everything converges to average, this two to three range over a period of three, five, and 10 years. So if you pick the best ranked, and just sit on it, it's not going to typically stay there. So past performance really does not guarantee future results. And also you really need to try to use the help of others. You don't wanna to try to figure everything out by yourself. It's a great movie, by the way, from that, uh, that image there. The movie is Pi, P-I, Mathematical Pi. So use the help of people who have done this. We've traded millions of contracts. We trade a lot in the E-mini S&P 500 option space, and we'll show you why. See the average daily volume at open interest growing tremendously in that space. So we figured out, uh, I guess, 10,000 ways that uh, didn't work and we put it all together and we're gonna show you in our demo here in just a bit. So time to simplify, break through those hurdles. Let's look at the indexes versus individual stocks. We'll go through this quickly. I think you're all pretty experienced, but we like to follow the stock indexes. It's convenient. You don't have to track millions of different ETFs and stocks a little hyperbole there, not millions, but thousands, and they're less volatile, although this week, uh, obviously, everything's volatile, but obviously, you know, an index is always going to be less volatile than an individual stock. You know, here's Virgin Galactic, for example. Oh, excuse me here. Um, almost doubled in value in just a matter of three or four days, and then it gave it all back just as quickly. 
Uh, you can be non-correlated, of course, when you have a stock versus an index. You know, here's Tesla had a bad uh, bad day here. Uh, meanwhile, the Nasdaq seemed to to yawn, didn't really care. That was earlier this uh, month, or actually early February. So looking at probabilities, insurance companies, casinos, how do they operate? Well, you know how they do it. We pay them premiums. They collect our premiums. We pay them to essentially manage risk, calculated risk. They sell time. That's really what they're selling and managing time. But they do insure themselves. They are patient and they have a long-term perspective. They look at probabilities. They just simply look at math, statistics, you know, things like expected return. So casinos do the same thing. That's why they have those big buildings. If you were to spin that roulette wheel, bet on that zero, spin it 38 times. You do that, you do that enough times, you'd have a net loss of $200. That average of 526 per spin becomes the house edge. And they do this knowing that, of course, they will pay out winnings at times. But in the long run, they're going to have the edge. That's the law of large numbers. So you run a trial long enough, and you're going to become closer uh, and closer to that expected value as more trials are performed, sort of like flipping a coin. You do it 10 times, you might even get 10 tails. But you do it a million times, you'll get 50-50. So looking at... Uh, an analogy here with uh, baseball. How, how about higher probability uh, in relation to baseball? How about this? Here's a batting champion, Rod Carew. He hit no home runs. So that means he had lots of base hits. He won batting titles, MVP, this and that and the other. So no home runs, not swinging for the fences, lots of base hits. So what about high probability option strategies? Well, we like to collect premiums by selling specific options. We need to be consistent and patient. We need to manage our risk. We know we'll have losers. And more importantly, as important, I guess I could say, we manage reward. Don't get greedy, but you need the proper tool to make this happen. Remember, we're not swinging for the fences here. We, we're going after base hits. So we're called, we're looking at credit spreads. These are insured positions. They're always covered. We'll talk about that. So your risk is predetermined and so is your reward. And you can apply credit spreads for up, down, and sideways markets, any condition. So some of the advantages of a credit spread on a stock index, you've got a margin of error. In this case, here's a strategy, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But the index may move a lot, yet the value of your spread may not be adversely impacted so much. And there's a reason why, and we'll show you that in just a minute. Let's look at the Greeks. Um, if, you, if you know this, that's fine. We'll go through it quickly. If not, it's real simple. We're going to look at a couple things, delta and theta. So here's an example of delta. Here's the S&P at 3120, for example. Here's the 3090 put, trading at 15 points. The delta is 0.25. So let's assume the S&P drops 10 points. What happens to the value of this put? It's, it was 15 points, and now because of the 0.25 delta, it gains 25% in value. And now that option is worth 18 and three quarters. So that's how delta works on a practical level, but there's also another side to it. It's the approximate probability of expiring in the money. So 0.25 means at that moment, there's a 25% chance an option expires in the money, but conversely, 75% chance that it expires worthless. So that's the way we like to look at it. We're going to be looking at deltas in just a minute. And remember, delta does not um, stay put. It's it's not static. It's always moving with price and, and time. Now, it does not represent the probability of a winning trade. So I want to make sure that is clear. Now, here's theta, sensitivity to time. So as you know, options have limited life. So we refer to time as theta expressed as a negative number equaling one day of time decay. So if an option is at 10 points and theta is negative 0.05, all things remaining equal the next day, that premium would be 9.95, and after that, 9.90, and so on and so forth. So unless the underlying asset is moving favorably and quickly enough, every out-of-money money option is always zero at expiration. 
So theta decay is what gives a credit spread that uh, margin of error, that highly technical term called wiggle room. So when you're selling premium, you're taking advantage of theta decay. Simple graph here, as you get closer to time zero, the percent of the premium remaining starts to drop, 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 especially in the last month or so of an options lifespan. So for the credit spread trader, you want to be like this guy. You want to be the most boring person in the room. You're looking to sell out of the money credit spreads, collect that money and watch time pass. But of course, it's never just that easy. We know that there's always a risk. So here's an example of selling an out of the money call spread. Say the S&P is trading here around 33.30 or so. Selling a 35.30 call and you collect four and a half points. Same time, you're buying a 35.50 and you pay two and a quarter. In this case, it's on the E-mini S&P 500. Every point is $50. So you would collect $112.50 minus your commissions, of course. So that's selling an out of the money call spread. So you do this if you don't think the market's going to move higher and breach this upper boundary or even get close to it. So it's really a strategy you'd use for someone who's bearish or perhaps a little bit neutral or even mildly bullish because um, you know market may move up a little bit more, but with that theta decay, you could still end up doing well on a spread like that. Here's selling a put spread, just the opposite. Here's a 29.90 put, you would sell for three points. At the same time, you buy the 29.70 put for a point, $100 that you collect, take into account your commissions, of course, and that is what that looks like. Pretty simple stuff. These are not naked options. These are always hedged or insured. Your maximum risk is always capped. So these are what we call covered option spreads. You don't want to be naked, and let me show you why. Uh, you've seen with all the volatility uh, last week and this week, but here's an example. Let's say the S&P were trading around 2,800, and you decided to sell a 25.85 put and collect that premium. Well, look what happens here. The S&P drops down to 23.50, and let's assume you did nothing. This is just an illustration, but let's assume you did nothing. You didn't cover that put. Well, you'd be sitting on a loss from this red line here down to around 23.50, around $12,000. But had you done that as a spread, sold that 25.85 put represented by the red line and simultaneously bought that 25.65 put, well then uh, your maximum risk would have been no more than 20 points. So 10 times, more than 10 times less. So that's why we're always doing covered positions. It's almost like insurance, covered puts and calls, naked options for the unlimited risk and also you end up in margin trouble if you're selling naked premium you're going to i guarantee you're going to have all sorts of margin issues it's it's a mess you do not want that and we do not trade in that manner so iron condors it's a non-directional strategy if you've never heard of the phrase don't worry about it and if you have uh, i'm going to show you in our demo we have a tool i think you're going to love it so it's the combination of a put and call spread for collecting premium so you want the index to stay between the short calls and the short puts. So this typical example of an iron condor, selling an out-of-the-money call spread and an out-of-the-money put spread. Now there is a secret strategy, it's called a dragonfly, and it's a variation on a condor. It's also a bit of a non-directional strategy to collect premium, and what am I talking about? Well here, let me explain it. You sell four out-of-the-money calls, and you buy three further out of the money calls, but one closer to the money call. In this case, you can see there's a 40 point difference between this long call and the short four calls. And then you do the same thing with the puts. And this has a completely different characteristic and dynamic compared to a condor because you are long options that are 40 points closer to the money compared to the ones that you have sold. So in this case, you see the market's moving up towards this upper boundary here. But keep in mind, this option here, this 3290 call, you you own it, you bought it. So it's 40 points closer to the money compared to the four ones that you sold. So it's going to gain value. That strike price will gain value much more quickly uh, and hold its value better uh, because it's 40 points closer to the money. And we're going to show you in the demo. And there are directional strategies too. 
you can do a half of a, of a dragonfly. So just the call side of it, or just the put side, of course. And there are bearish directional strategies that they like uh, something where you can get an asymmetric return possibility. So gains in value as the stock index declines. And this is something we call a bear hedge. So you sell an out of the money call spread. And with the money you collect, you buy an out of the money put spread. So if the market were to drop quickly enough, the put spread you bought would gain in value and the call spread you sold would uh, drop in value and both sides of that trade could become a winner. And of course, if it went the wrong way, uh, then you end up just having to cover the call spread just like you would with any other uh, position. Sometimes you can place these for a credit as well uh, or just even money, that's what we try to do. And the same thing with the bullish directional strategy just flipping that over here, here's a bull hedge where you would essentially buy this out of the money call spread and sell an out of the money put spread. So the money that you've collected for selling that put spread is used to buy or finance the purchase of the call spread. And if the market runs up, like in this example, um, you end up essentially sometimes making your uh, potentially a maximum gain on the on the call spread here uh, that you bought and then of course keeping the premium uh, that you collected so but how do you know what to do which trades to make where to start what to sell what to buy what's the correct price when to buy and sell how do you manage all the risk and profits so we've done all that testing for you over the years we have a fresh approach to trading complex option spreads it's called theta trader these are pre-built credit and debit spreads. So we have a proprietary algo that creates what we call theta trades, the same types of strategies we just looked at that more sophisticated traders are using. Available for bull, bear, and flat market conditions. And I'm getting some questions and we'll talk about that in just a second. And then we have automated risk and profit management tracking, something called the risk thermal indicator. And let me just address that one question real quick, trading credit spreads in high volatility. Uh, yes, because we're selling uh, long duration, we're not selling short dated, and I'll show you that in the demo. So, we're gonna show you how to take action and let's jump into the demo here. Let me switch screens. All right, now you are looking at the dashboard for Theta Trader. I just wanted to confirm you're seeing what I'm seeing and you are. And let me just, there we go. So here we go is the dashboard for Theta Trader. We're not gonna dig into all this, our time is limited, but we can give you a brief review. This is just a demo account, but first thing you'll notice up here are the Theta Trades. And you can see there's a bullish tab, bearish tab, neutral tab. And anytime you click that, you can see all the different strategies populated for that particular market outlook. And since we were looking at uh, dragonflies and condors, why don't we start there? And I'll explain the rest of this other stuff in just a moment. And also you'll notice we trade the ES, the E-mini S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000, but for the most part, the volume is in the ES, so that's where we focus. And so click on an iron condor and you'll see all of today's theta trades that are available anywhere from 19 to 72 days till expiration. And you can see the strike prices are all pre-populated for each particular series. And you can just hover your mouse. You can see this is the potential profit at expiration. This is your targeted annualized return at expiration. And really you can't expect these types of returns, uh, but this is really here to compare one trade to another. So you'll notice that trades with the shorter duration are always going to have the higher annualized return because um, they have a much shorter lifespan. And it just assumes you you roll those trades over uh, when you annualize it. But we know that's not 
really uh, going to happen. But nonetheless, it is helpful to compare one trade to another. So if you see here, I clicked on this one, 72 days till expiration. And let's take a look here. You can see all of the fields, all pre-populated. -pre Everything's already done. The algorithm does all the work for you. Gives you the date till expiration, the expiration date, current quote. Here's the price of that spread. It settled at 2.6. Here's the net premium, your put risk and your call risk. So what we do is the, the put risk, the maximum put risk on any spread is what's needed for margin uh, minus the premium received. So in this case, you see the cash required is $891 and your profit potential is $109. Now people might think, well, why would I put up 891 to make 109? Well, let me show you here. Here's the option we're selling, which is the 2540 put. The delta is 9.81. So remember, we talked about the probability of expiring out of the money. So that means there's over a 90% probability that this put option that you sell is going to expire out of the money. Now, the 3500 call is what we'd sell. Same thing here, 6.58 delta. So you're talking about a 93 something percent probability that this option expires out of the money. So that's what we're talking about with higher probability outcomes. These are the types of premiums uh, and option strikes that we're selling to collect premium. And then here's something called the targeted return on cash, the T rock, and then your targeted annualized return. But you can see this is all pre-populated for you. And if you wanted to change any strike, you could, but that kind of defeats the purpose really of the algo doing it for you. It's pre-populated as a sell. Quantity always defaults to one. And the pricing there at 2.6, but you can add an adjustment to pricing if you want to take, uh, you're willing to take maybe 10 cents less, maybe you're willing to accept 250. And here's one thing too I want to show you the chart. This is what I like to do, is always look at the chart for perspective so you can see kind of where we are. You can see how far out of the money the calls are that you're selling and how far out of the money uh, the puts are. So it's a good visualization. Or you can look at just the call side here of the trade or just the put side. You know, I want to point out too, if you want to look at the, um, in this particular example, you have the 3,500 calls that you're selling and the 2,540 puts that you're selling. So you have a 960 point spread between the puts and the calls. So that's uh, that's a lot of room, and that's uh, in large part due to the increased volatility of late. So the algorithm pushes out the strike prices uh, automatically. So let's assume you wanted to do a quantity of, let's just say five. And you go ahead and you place that order. And you can see here that you sold five at 260. It's a demo account. It just assumes that you're filled in this demo account. So let me show you something else there is a simulator so you can back test and look at any strategy over any period of time and this is a great way to learn it's a good learning tool it's also kind of fun so i've already preloaded some trades i want to help uh, describe the difference between the condor and the dragonfly and i think the best way is the simulator so here is an iron condor in the month october trade so what you can do here is, let me scroll down and I'll show you. We have these buttons, so you can play the chart one day at a time, or you can go all the way to the end. Let's just see what happens if we play it one day at a time. And I wanna show you what's happening below. You can see here, green, that's the RTI, it means green. Uh, good is, is nothing to do. The risk thermal indicator, the algorithm says, do nothing, just sit on that trade and do nothing. You can see here your P&L, is turning green, meaning it's turning profitable. So really, you're selling premium, you've sold a condor, and you're just sitting there, and the RTI says all is well. And look at this, it turns blue. And what does that mean? It means get out and take profit. We never hold trades till expiration. So before you get uh, to expiration, you're always going to be out, whether it's for a win or for a loss. So you always want to be out before expiration. Now, you can automatically have this done for you.
there's a setting, I'll show you where to do it. You just click the, the box and you can have this automated. So the risk thermal indicator can automatically close out your trade for you when it reaches a particular profit threshold according to the algo or a risk threshold. And we'll show you that in just a second. But you can see here with about 36, 37 days till expiration, the RTI says take your profits and run and you'd be out of that trade. So there's, there's a condor. Now let's look at another condor. And let's go ahead and play this one. You can see it's green all as well, but it's turning, uh, the P&L is negative and that's okay. It's getting a little bit moving up, up, up closer to this upper boundary here, closer to these calls. But let's go ahead and see what happens. So you notice some colors changed. So what happened? We went from green to yellow. Yellow means take a little bit of caution and then it turned red. So it means get out, take your loss, take your lump and move on. So that's what can happen when you're selling premium sometimes, but you have to have risk management in place and we like to automate it. So let's take a look here. So with about 16 days remaining, it said get out, the risk is too great, and you can automate that as well. Now, I wanna show you a dragonfly. Before I show you the dragonfly in the simulator, I wanna show you what it looks like on the dashboard. So we're gonna to go to the neutral strategy, click dragonfly, and we looked at the condor for the week three. So we'll look at the dragonfly. And here's a chart. This is what the dragonfly trade looks like, the algo-driven dragonfly. And it's going to sell the same calls and the same puts as the condor that we just looked at earlier. You can see the same deltas here and here. But let me point out something, because you're selling four calls and four puts, obviously your, your put risk is going to be greater and therefore your cash required is greater. But of course, your profit potential is greater at the same time. The targeted return on cash on a dragonfly is going to be just a little bit less than a condor, and that's because you have bought those closer to the money puts and calls. Remember those closer to the money puts and calls. In this case, you bought the 125.80 put, uh, and the ones you're selling were 25.40. So you're 40 points closer to the money on the puts and the calls. So that changes the dynamic, dynamics a little bit. Your targeted annualized return is always gonna be a little bit less than a condor. But nonetheless, we're gonna show you in the simulator how that works. And you can see it's pre-populated as a cell, quantity defaults to one. And go ahead and place that, and there it is. The dragonfly filled, 1165. So with that said, you saw how this iron condor, this is a end of month January iron condor trade. It actually took a loss. Let's look at that same exact trade had we placed a dragonfly and see what happens here. Instead of a condor on that same day, let's say you placed a dragonfly. Look at that. Market's running up closer to your upper boundary, but because you have a long call option here that's 40 points closer to the money, it actually turns profitable to the point where the RTI triggers a profit-taking order. That's what blue means. So instead of a loss with 16 days till expiration, if you were trading a condor, here with 29 days till expiration, you have an opportunity over four, at least four days here to take profits and get out of that trade and take your money and run and do something else with it. So that is a big, big difference in the, uh, I guess you could say the um, risk reward characteristics and traits of a, an iron condor versus a dragonfly. We still do condors, but we really like the dragonfly, it tends to be more robust and let's look at one more here. 
I don't have all the time in the world, but there's a lot more we could look at. Here's another condor, April in the month. There we go, hopefully you can see that. Okay, so it turned blue with two days till expiration. So you had to wait a long time to for the juice to come out of that uh, lemon. <laughs> so that, that typically is very unusual. Um, normally we're gonna be out of these trades much sooner for better or for worse. So that's unusual, but it turned out to be okay. It worked, but let's say you had a condor. This is that same April end of month, uh, option series, but instead of a condor, what happens if you would have placed a dragonfly? Let's take a quick look here. Well, let me show you. Uh, you saw that quickly. It went blue with 34 days and 33 days. You had two days here where it was blue. In other words, it was mature enough, mature enough where the algorithm decided it's now time to get out and take profit. So you can see here this column, your percent of the premium captured at settlement. So right around 72, 73% of the total premium available, you could pull off the table, put it in your pocket and run and take your profit. So you can see the different dynamic between the condor and the dragonfly. Now let's see, someone had a question here. Uh, they asked about, Let's see here. We do not, uh, well, this will be in the FAQs, but since I brought it up here, we do not trade individual stocks, but thank you for asking. And I think we're good with that. So let's see here. Before I move on, I want to show you this is where you can find your settings. This is where you'd set up your activate your risk manager, automate it right there by checking that box. Activate your profit directive, you just check that box, it's that simple, and then whenever it turns blue, you get out, take a profit, if it turns red, you get out and you take a loss, and it's all automated. And we have tutorials available, videos, education here, um, on options as well, all videos available within ThetaTrader, just part of the package. Uh, we have a help file too, and you can look here, for example, I think it's under the glossary, if you want to really dig a little bit deeper on the meaning for every color and all the different parameters, if you want a review of all the different spreads and how they work, it's all right there. But I like looking at the actual dashboard and just looking at the image or the graph, I think that's more helpful. And then we have something called TradeScope, which is our daily newsletter. Uh, and our daily trading summary. It's a narrative of what happened in Europe and Asia. Um, so that's all part of the Theta Trader package. We also have something called the Trade Builder. So if for some reason you wanted to start from scratch and build your own trade, you just go ahead and select here and then just follow the prompts. But quite honestly, people use the Theta Trader the way it was intended, and that is with the um, algo driven trades. So let's take one more look at the dashboard here. And here is something I wanted to point out. On the dashboard, you can see all your current open sold positions and any open bought positions. So remember, we're selling premium. Theta Trader does that, but it can also buy premium as well. And if you wanted to take a look, one of the big, um, let's say the catalyst, a major catalyst into designing this was how difficult it is for people to trade these types of spreads and monitor and track them using a typical brokerage statement. So it's a nightmare. So we make it so easy. You can see at a glance here on your dashboard, but if you wanna look at everything at once and drill down onto any particular trade, you can see here, just hover your mouse over any one of these. And then for example, you can just click on it and you can drill down into the particulars of any open position that you have. You can see a graph, see where the trade has been. It's just that simple and that easy. So each one of these lines here, of course, is a particular trade. 
And if you want to close out a trade, you just click that exit button and it's that simple. So there you have it. That is a really uh, quick, uh, but yeah, I think somewhat thorough rundown of the Theta Trader dashboard. I want to point out something else, probably what might be the best feature of all. So let me switch over again. Okay, maybe you feel like you've been drinking from the fire hose. Anyway, so uh, I couldn't resist that one. Here's what I think makes it even easier because we know you don't want to sit in front of a screen all day. This guy has, a, I don't know, 30 or 40 screens, right? So you have your own routine, your own thing to do. You want to do things with your family, go on vacation and whatnot. So this is why we developed this aspect to Theta Trader. As easy as Theta Trader is, you saw how easy it is. It's even better. It's our trade alert functionality. No screens at all. One minute trading. One touch trading. You receive an alert. Touch the link. It takes you to that screen. If you like the trade, you just touch accept. If you don't like it, you touch reject. It is that simple. And how does it work? Because these are integrated with your trading account with us. So these are what we call live alerts. All you do is touch accept and our technology places the order for you. It's all integrated with ThetaTrader. And then of course, as you saw, once a trade is filled, you can elect to have the RTI automatically track and manage your position. So let's look at it here. I just captured a little uh, short video. You get that link, you touch it. You can see a graph of the trade a little headline describing the trade. You can see the net premium collected, the cash required, and it's already pre-sized for your account because of course Data Trader is tracking everything. If you like it, you just touch accept and our technology submits the order. It's that easy. You don't have to log into a third-party platform. Look at that one more time. Gives you the days till expiration, your targeted annualized return, current quote, and it's that easy, folks. So hopefully it was time well spent, discovered something new and valuable. So here's what we're going to talk about: how to get your Theta Trader Elite membership. Of course, you have the Theta Trader software. You saw the proprietary algo with the Theta Trades. Simple, effective, pre-builds everything for you. The simple trade tracking much much easier than this i've <laughs> uh, been in this since 1991 it's the same software if you can believe that you cannot figure out what's what you just can't so it's a mess the rti it automatically exits your trades for you so that's what we call autopilot try to remove those emotions and then that's how you do it you just check that risk manager and that profit directive and that's all it takes to automatically close out your positions for you. And then the trade simulator, you saw how much fun that was with those animated uh, charts you can play, go backwards in time. And then the trade builder functionality. So you get all that $3,588 value for that software as part of an elite member. And then of course the trade alerts, people spend a lot of money on trade alerts. They come to us, they're spending quarterly, monthly, uh, yearly fees on trade alerts. Um, they're just not as, um, well, they're just not as user friendly. You have to go transpose what you receive on an email or an alert, go log into another platform, try to type it in somewhere. People spend a lot of money on those trade alerts, yearly value of at least $4,400 for that. And you just activate your trade alerts uh, right there in the settings page, that easy. And then with the elite membership, you have a private coach alongside you. So one-on-one -on -one attention with a co-pilot, someone who's licensed, been doing this for decades. That's worth at least $7,500. I know people pay for tens and tens of thousands of dollars. There's a popular thing online where you pay $25,000. Um, and that's all good and well, but that's all part of your service with Theta Trader. And we mentioned the trade scope and the daily proprietary research 
$2,952 value. Then the videos, of course, I pointed that out. But you get all that, the value there, $18,500 value with your elite membership, one-time payment. It is typically $997, but we do offer 20% off. It's a live presentation. Sunday night through Sunday night, 20% off, $797. You see the link there, cf.altavest.com forward slash TT Elite. And there's a 30-day guarantee, so there's really no excuse. And really, um, I can't remember the last time someone used it, but I think it has happened, and it's no trouble. If it's not for you, you don't like it, that's fine. Uh, life goes on, we'll refund that money. So really, there's no risk for you to give this a try. One payment, it's not quarterly, monthly, annual, or anything, just one time. And if you have a $100,000 account, we'll refund that for you. And of course, you can do an IRA account, people always ask. And I'll talk a little bit more about some other things you probably didn't know. We talked about why we're doing the ES or the E-mini S&P 500. Well, there's a study and it says here, ES options offer superior execution. They offer a cost savings of four to $15 per contract. So we're just talking about the tight bid offer spread. And some of the advantages on these S&P 500 futures options, large volume, liquidity, and access in the E-mini futures markets. It says here there is more notional value traded before the U.S. market opens than S&P 500 ETFs trade all day. So this is where you want to be, folks. There's deep liquidity, average daily volume, important source of liquidity. You can see there tremendous, tremendous activity in this particular space. If you've not been in it before, um, it's the time it's time to get in it because that's where that's where you need to be. Largest market share, densely packed strikes. You have access to any strike price, very granular, more than 100 annual expirations available. And one, once again, we talked about tracking just one or two markets. You don't have to follow thousands of ETFs and stocks. The cost structure is clear, not opaque. I'm going to talk about that in a second and the margin is efficient. So what about the hidden cost of stock trading? Is it really free? No, there's something called payment for order flow. Stock brokerages are paid by third-party market-making firms. Maybe you've heard of Citadel, but they route their orders to these third-party firms for execution. That makes your order ripe for exploitation. So what does that mean? Less favorable fills, costing you more money, but the cost is buried in the transaction. You just don't notice it. Robinhood makes millions selling out their millennial customers to high frequency traders. So I'm not trying to bash in particular on any one uh, company, but that's their model. Their model is to, to basically market your order to a third party. It says they make hundreds of millions of dollars in cash income by selling customer orders to the high frequency trading meat grinder. They are not charities. And the only reason that high frequency traders would pay Robinhood tens to hundreds of millions of dollars is that they can exploit retail customers. So nothing wrong with um, offering a service, but it's definitely not free, everybody. So no such thing as a free lunch. This is a little bit harsh, but I, I kind of chuckled when I read it. Schwab and others confirm their status as casinos and purveyors of financial opioids. No such thing as a free lunch. Retail stock brokerages are not charities. They will make up lost commission revenue in other ways, usually obfuscated way down in the guts of their workflow processes where few people notice. So yeah, interesting. So with E-mini futures options, there are no hidden costs. These are not security options. They trade at the CME group. There's no payment for order flow. It's one electronic market on the Globets exchange and all orders receive equal treatment now tax efficiency something you may not know if you're trading individual stock options you have a hundred hundred thousand dollar account let's say you get a 20 percent return and you're in the highest tax bracket you are going to generate a seventy four hundred dollar tax liability rate of return of twelve point six percent if you're trading futures options 14.64% return, you save over $2,000 in taxes because of the 60-40 tax treatment. And also you don't have to itemize. 
You just get one number, plug it into your 1099, and that's it. So FAQs, what's the performance of Theta Trader, people ask? Well, everyone's different. It's just a platform for self-directed traders to make their own trading decisions. And I want to point out that all performance calculations in Theta Trader are net of trading cost. And commission rates, our rates are competitive. They're five and a quarter round turn all in. So that's total. If you go somewhere and you see a stock brokerage, it might say two and a quarter. I just looked a while back, but that's per side. Then they add more fees on top, like clearing and exchange fees, and the total can be higher than what we charge. So our rates are very competitive. How much money should I start trading with? Uh, condors, you need about $1,000 for each one. For a dragonfly, 5,000. So you might want 10 separate spreads going all at once and different strikes and whatnot so 50 to 100 thousand dollars is a suggestion here's how you want to ladder your strike prices as time goes by uh, you just make sure that you don't overlap your strike prices that's one way to look at it so why alternatives well they may improve diversification lower portfolio risk and they can help smooth the impact of market volatility and help grow an investor's total return. There's something called mean reversion. So stock market's 10-year returns exhibit a strong tendency to regress to the mean, particularly good decades followed by mediocre ones or worse. So last decade, in fact, even last year was tremendous. Um, so last decade was so great uh, that this next decade is less likely to be so. Something to keep in mind. Here's um, Cliff Asnes, he's with AQR. I think they manage uh, about 200 billion now. Thinks future returns in the next five, 10 years will be soberingly low for traditional portfolios of 60, 40 bonds, stocks and bonds. And then here's interesting here, what happens to the S&P 500 after an emergency rate cut? Thought this was interesting. There were seven times in the past, they looked back, they looked at the median, so one week later, the market's up 2.8%. Six months later, it's down 4.3%. And a year later, it's down 9.2%. So I don't know. There may uh, there may be some uh, rough patches ahead, but uh, you know you know how that goes. Past doesn't guarantee the future, but it is interesting to look at. So we like the non-correlation uh, and the approach that alternatives uh, offer. You don't have to be tied to any particular benchmark. So we think it helps to have some alternatives, have a slice there in that alternative universe doing something such as what we just showed you. Use technology, the algo-generated trades, the one-touch alerts, convenient using autopilot. You can kind of uh, use that RTI and set it and forget it if you'd like. Uh, use our experience to your advantage, and this would help diversify. So remember, there is your uh, link, cf.altavest.com. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. And remember, we offer that 30-day guarantee, cf.altavest.com forward slash TT Elite. You can get that discount before Sunday and get yourself started. So with that said, let me see if there are a few more questions. Okay, let's see here. Uh, what brokers use that is us. We are the brokerage firm, AltaVest, since 1997. And we do prefer futures options, yes. Minimum account, we suggest uh, 50,000 as a minimum, but it's not written in stone. And the performance of the platform is different for everyone. Everyone places different trades and does it differently. Uh, it's typically available for clients only in the US. It's not because we don't want clients outside, but regulatory uh, issues, some, it's difficult for, for us to have uh, Canadian or EU clients. And let's see, so accounts, no, we are not uh, SIPC or FDIC insured. Uh, we trade through RJ O'Brien, we're 100 years old, the largest uh, independently owned futures clearing firm in the country. And correct, we get out, period. We do not make uh, typically adjustments in the Theta Trader platform, although your advisor may do that at times with you uh, using trade alerts. Um, and it is a one-time fee. It is not recurring. Just one time, $7.97 to get started. And <clears throat> let's see here. 5,000 is probably 
a little bit too low, I wouldn't recommend starting with 5,000. I don't think you'd be able to do it justice. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Stephen Place. I'm the founder and head trader at investingwithoptions.com, where we teach people just like you how to trade options successfully to build a legacy and a better life. Today, we're talking about three market pullbacks. What I have found from my experience trading the markets and researching the markets is that there are three categories of market pullbacks. Now, that may seem like a very bold statement. After all, it's always different when we see shocks. Right now, we've got some coronavirus stuff going on. That's why I styled my slides with nice little scary looking viruses. And if you go back and you look at past events, the Fed hiking too fast, China currency adjustments, Ebola crises, fiscal cliffs, Eurozone crises, all of these seem like they are going to be different. Yet, if you look at the price action, certain things don't change. Liquidity characteristics, human psychology, where people experience pain in their positions, and we can use that to figure out how this market is going to trade. At the time of this video, as I'm watching the market right now, we're down three and a third percent. This is on the back of one of the strongest rallies yesterday, where we saw nearly a 5% rally in the broad indexes. This is certainly an interesting time to be alive and trading the markets. It's also a great time, I believe, to be trading options around the markets because there are different things that occur in options trading that give you a better edge than trading straight stock. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Stephen Place. I have been trading professionally for 10, 11 years now. I cut my teeth during the market crash of 2008 and I have traded every market in between. Massive rallies like what we saw in 2017, massive crashes like what we saw in 2019 and boring stupidly boring ranges like we saw in 2014. today we're talking about the three market pullbacks i guess i got to throw this disclaimer in here you and you alone are responsible for the gains and losses in any kind of financial speculation options along with futures forex leverage stocks bitcoin tulip bulbs and everything else you have the potential to lose all your money. How you manage your risk, how you select your trades will dictate whether you're going to be successful in the long term. I'm not your broker dealer, um, and this is for educational purposes only. Before we go and we look at individual stock setups and individual market setups, we're going to take a break for a second. I'm going to take a breath, and we're going to remember some physics. Normal physics that you would see in high school, right? where you have a weight on a spring, or you have things dropping in the air, or you have projectiles or things rolling on a frictionless surface. And every single one of these models can be drilled down into very simplistic equations, All right, It's physics 101. If you know a spring has a weight on it, it's going to move up and down. If you know that two things drop in a vacuum, they're going to drop at the same rate. If you know that two things hit each other, there's going to be something called the conservation of mass, all right? In physics, these are basic ideas. The math changes when things are very, very big, when things are very, very small, or when things are very, very fast. When things are big, we no longer have to deal with individual marbles hitting each other. We now have to include space time and gravity wells and all these fun things. When things are very small, we're no, de we're no longer dealing with weights on a spring, we're dealing with quantum mechanics and how electrons move. And when things are moving very fast and approaching the speed of light, things get really goofy. When we look at these markets, there are instances in which markets trade what we would call normally. There are rallies, there are sell-offs, you've got some moving averages acting as support, you've got overbought, oversold, ranges, and everything else. This is what I would consider a normal market. 
this is operating within the bounds of traditional liquidity characteristics. Every once in a while, something comes out of left field and we see a move like we're seeing right now, where you have an event-driven risk that significantly affects the market to the point where traditional liquidity characteristics change. We are now approaching the speed of light. And so the traditional math doesn't necessarily work as well, right? If you're looking to buy a moving average, right? It's going to be a little bit more difficult to trade that. Um, I think the 200 day moving average was somewhere around 3000. We knifed right underneath it, bounced and then came back above it. Okay, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to apply certain technical and psychological indicators in a market that behaves statistically normally compared to something where it is a land of wolves. They're two different things. And, and I, I will put my neck out there and say that certain technical analysis will work under certain conditions and other times it doesn't. Right? It's not going to be like the textbooks. And in real life, that's not how markets will operate. Okay. So we're going to talk about pullbacks. And what I consider pullbacks are large pullbacks. Okay. We could even consider them a market crash, right? This 10% move in six days off of all time highs is something we have never seen before. It is unprecedented. Uh, the speed at which we saw sellers come into play was something that the market has never experienced before. Yet we can use past events to give us a rough idea of how this market can trade. What I'm not telling you is that we will know exactly how it will trade. We don't know a month from now what the price of the market will be. Heck, we don't really know that well tomorrow, but we can get a structure and we can start asking questions. We can start asking questions like, what will the market trade like if it retests 3000? Will the bid start to hold and firm up or will it knife through it? What will the market trade like back at 3100? Is it going to have no respect for that level and jam back above it and hold? And then we see those early shorts get blown out. Or is it going to be swiftly rejected? What have we seen in the past and what kind of characteristics can we push forward to give us a good trading framework? Now, this is, <laughs> this is not theoretical stuff. We're in the middle of it, right? This is, I'm talking about this and the market is gapping down and we're down 3%. We were up 5% yesterday. These are concepts that I have and continue to apply in this market right now. One of the biggest lies, I think it's the biggest lie right now. We'll, we'll just say it right now. This is the biggest, stupidest, most absurd idea that's currently being floated around in the markets. And it's that we've never had a bear market since 2009. Here's a great example. I just pulled this off of some random Bloomberg article. And here is the claim. The 2010s were the first decade without a bear market. Can we call that BS? I think we can call that BS. Can I cuss on this webinar? Maybe, we'll see. How do we define a bear market 20%? You know how people are defining a bear market right now? 20% on a closing basis. You know how dumb that is? Does anyone not remember December 2019? We were down 20% off highs. It just didn't close there. So obviously it wasn't a bear market. Did anyone trade the October, December 2019 crash? That was a bear market. Did anyone trade the fiscal cliff in 2011 where we dropped 20%? It just wasn't on a closing basis. So obviously it wasn't a bear market. Man, that was a rough time, right? That was a very difficult time to be a net long kind of investor. So we have had instances and we've been in a secular bull market since 2009. We have had two cyclical bear markets. We've had one 2014 to 2016. 
and then we had one um, starting at when was the Volpocalypse? It was February 2018 through um, December, Octodice 2018. I think I said all that right. There have been two distinct, discrete bear markets. So when we think about this, whenever this happens, everyone thinks when the market pulls back 10% that the market is now going to cascade lower and crash. And you know what? It might. It's always a possibility of having some kind of a black swan risk. It usually doesn't happen all at once, though. Usually there's a structure to it before we start to cascade lower, and we can identify some of those structures before it happens. I'm going to see if I can get the Q&A box set up really quick. All right. Let's go to the bottom. All right, I'm just making sure I got the Q&As up. Where was I? When we think about pullbacks, all right, how do we know that the market's not going to crash? We don't. It's possible. But every time the market pulls back 10%, everyone thinks it's going to crash. There are people who have been hoping for a crash for the past decade because they're schmucks. That's not a good way to trade the markets, and that's not a good way to manage risk. The people who are celebrating this crash because people are dying have been looking for a crash. And if you look at when they started to go bearish, they have a ways to go before they're at break even. There are very few people I know who flipped from bull to bear over the past few months. Okay, so we want to make sure we avoid the noise here. How do we define a pullback? If we want to go look at past big P, not little P pullbacks, how do we go and look at aggressive sell offs? And this is how I do it. This is a chart of the standard deviation, where is it? Standard deviation over a 20 week period. All right, so we're not gonna get into the fancy math about this, but basically it looks over the past 20 weeks and it says, what is this week's rally or sell-off relative to the past 20 weeks? So it is a contextual basis. What I've found is that anything around minus three, so a three standard deviation move to the downside are statistically significant events that are worth studying, okay? So you can go and you can look at the spikes, right? The 2010 flash crash, fiscal cliff 2011, uh, 2012, I think that was Eurozone crisis. 2015 was the um, Chinese currency event. One that isn't shown on this, but it does exist is the Brexit, which was June 2016, and then um, election where the market went limit down overnight after Trump got elected. And then we've got um, Volpocalypse right here, Fed being stubborn, and that's basically it. Okay, and you can go back further. You can look at the 2008 crash. You can look at some other volatility events in 2006 and go all the way back. All right, so that we, we can go into those and we can zoom in and we can say, all right, what was the peak to trough sell-off? What was the counter trend bounce? Did it retest? How long did it take to retest those lows? And what kind of move did it require to get back and test highs? Sometimes it didn't, right? In the 2008 crash, we didn't retest highs for years. Other times, straight down, straight up, okay? If you have any questions for those watching this live, let me know. I'll make sure I'm answering them. There are transitions. So we can talk about charts all day, but there is also news flow, no matter what kind of deep correction we're looking at, no matter what kind of deep pullback. And it's pretty simple. You have three phases. You have an unknown unknown, and this is not predictable. The best example I have was the surprise currency adjustment in the, in the Chinese currencies in August 2015, just out of nowhere, right? No one saw it coming, and we dropped um, something like 6 7% in three days. And then it became a known risk, but we don't know what the outcome is going to be. So the transition from an unknown unknown to a known unknown is where a lot of the first impulse happens. It's the first part of the sell-off. When we have something that we know about, but we don't know the outcome of, that's where we start to get 
uh, bi-directional chop. That's where things start to move a lot. Recent example, market popped, the Fed cut rates 50 basis points. Um, very, it was, we everyone knew it was coming, but it was unusual for it to happen historically. That just so happened to be the current top in our range and now we're selling off a little bit we might get some good news flow we might get some bad news flow but then we get this transition from a known unknown to a known known once the risks are fully understood and get priced in that tends to mark a bottom in the stock market okay Good example, Oct 2014, we had the Ebola crisis. It came out of nowhere, there were some diagnoses, the market sold off. Uh, we did not know how many people there would be. It, would, it continued to sell off, sell off, sell off until we said, okay, it's pretty much contained and we know the outcome and we know the economic offense, effects and then the market rallied. There are other instances in which the market will go from different unknowns to different ones all right so the the current example we've got covid19 we've got the coronavirus <clears throat> here's the very cynical part about the market the stock market does not care about people dying all right the stock market does not care about people dying it cares about whether a company can sell things to people for money and how many things it can sell so we've got this unknown unknown right now, which was COVID-19. And there's a lot of questions about how many people will get it, how many people are gonna die, what's the mortality rate, what's the R not. And eventually that will get sorted out. We don't know how long it's gonna take. The biggest question in a different box, all right, which is also a known unknown, is, how many things can companies sell if they can't make those things? So we're now calling it the potential for supply shock risks. And the next cascade is to say, if people are scared about things, will they continue to buy stuff? And then it becomes demand side risk and that's where recessionary risk truly lies. All right, so we don't know, again, we cannot predict the outcomes for basically these three things. How many people are gonna die? Can companies make things? Will people buy things? It's going to take time to flesh that out. And as more news comes out, right, then we will see markets attempt to adjust. During those adjustments, that news flow, there's going to be a metric ton of volatility, right? This is, we, we know this, right? The market was up 5% yesterday, all right? So this is, something that I've already told you, but it is a good mental framework to approach how to trade these markets. How much are we transitioning from something that we know is scary to something that we have a good handle on statistically? Because if we have statistics and we have firm numbers and we know how many people are gonna die, or we know how many people are going to have supply shocks, our Chinese factory is gonna get spun up online, all of these things will start to get priced into the market and we will start to see a little bit more efficiency in the market. When that efficiency happens, liquidity comes back up, volatility dries down, and if volatility goes down, there is a tendency for the market to go up. There's three kinds of bottoms. If you go back and you look at how the market's traded over the past 20 years, if you go look at these um, volatility events to the downside, you can group them into three baskets. Will every single one be the exact same? No, that's a very silly kind of idea, right? But let's say you go to a dog show and you see a Pembroke Welsh Corgi and you see a German Shepherd and you see a Great Dane. They're all different kinds of dogs, but they're all still dogs. Right, so that's that's kind of what we're working with here. The first pullback is the V bottom. If you go and you look at this historically, these don't really happen very often. It's possible, but they do not happen very often. There are two instances in which they happen very often or in, in which the conditions are proper for the V bottom to happen. The first good example is Oct 2014. This was Ebola crisis. Right, and people got scared. And off of this high to this low, I believe was 9.8%, something along those lines. 
Um, the powers that be get it under control. Ebola starts to go away. It's not about the people dying. It's about can we price that in? And once you do, I mean, just straight shot up. And I know it was a straight shot up because right around here, I started getting short and it didn't happen. It didn't work out very well. V bottoms happen when there's an exogenous event. So an outside risk that can quickly get priced in. <laughs> now, this is the closest example of a what we would call a biological risk to the markets, Ebola, and we're currently in COVID-19, aka the coronavirus. I think that the difference right now is that Ebola happened in Africa and there's not production capacity in Africa and there's it's low GDP and not demand. All right, that's the cynical abstract way to look at it. All right, so it, I think it is a little bit more difficult for the market to pull off a V bottom because again, we're not necessarily caring about people dying, we're caring about supply and demand for companies to sell things. The other example in which we see V bottoms is when there already has been some kind of volatility event and th this is an extension to the downside from that volatility event. The most famous example, March 2009, the Dow hit 666, and then we bounced from there and we never looked back. A more recent example, DEES 2019, where we had this strong pull, and then the market went into a very wide, sloppy, volatile range, and then we see this extension to the downside. That extension tends to be extreme capitulation and is ripe for a V-bounce. So what will we need to see in this current market? Well, we need to see maybe a month or two a chop. And then if we retest the lows two or three or four times and we break down into that aggressive sell-off, into any kind of extreme capitulation, that would probably be a better chance of a V-bounce con compared to what we have right now. The second kind of pullback are rollover pullbacks where they really don't, relative to the impulse to the downside, relative to the impulse to the downside, the bounce tends to not work as well as you think. All right, and the retracement isn't very aggressive and it does not take long for, for um, you, you see a retest, but the energy is different. Rollover pullbacks, tend to happen in significant, secular, protracted bear markets. All right, so a good example, 2008, we would see these strong moves to the downside and we would see bounces, a little bit of sideways action, maybe a retest, but it would continue to roll over. The, the question now is, how do we know that that's not gonna happen right now in this market? Of course it's possible. Right, but the current technical characteristics are not the same compared to what we saw in 2008 and what we saw in 2001. And the, the only way to know this is it's going to be over time before we can get a true feel. What tends to happen when we, saw, when we see these rollover bounces, these rollover pullbacks, is that they are already after the market has seen significant multi-month distribution. And I, I don't think that's the best odds for what we are seeing right now in this market. Again, it's possible, but it is not the kind of structure that you see when um, we're just 10% off all-time highs and it's the first significant pullback we've seen. Okay. The third kind... You know, I, I guess I could put some sort of fancy uh, name to it. It's the chop you to death pullback. This is the most common kind of pullback we see. This is the most significantly the most common kind of pullback we see um, during the secular bull market that we've seen since 2009. All right. We could put a fancy name on it, but honestly, it'll chop you to death. This is in which we see a lot of news-based uncertainty surrounding a specific event, and there is a tendency for an extreme bounce or a secondary extreme bounce 
but the market tends to retest the lows at least once. Some recent examples. 2019, Volpocalypse, right? Way too many people were short volatility. They were buying XIV. XIV broke the market. We see a massive bounce to about, was this, about 75% retrace and then a retest of the lows. And then we get this right here in late 2019. Big, <laughs> excuse me, big sell-off, a little bit of a retracement, secondary sell-off, retest those highs, and then we get chopped up to death. This one retests the lows right here. It overshoots. It bounces and then it retests the lows immediately after, indicating that there is much, much more supply than demand. And then we see a secondary push lower with a V bounce. This right here is something to slap on your wall to show you the two major kinds of chop you to death patterns. It really does come down to how often that support level is tested. Some other recent examples, 2015. Out of nowhere, China says, hey, you know what? We're going to cut, uh, not cut. We're going to adjust our currency and repeg against the dollar. See a massive move. It does not fully retest, but you know what? It's close enough. During the second push higher, it retraces two thirds of that move before retesting. Market throws a tantrum in 2016. Big sell off. The bounce is about half of the retracement and then a retest, and that's about the cleanest double bottom you'll ever see. They are rarely that clean. We either overshoot or we don't touch it by a couple percentage points. There's a very distinct structure to these kinds of moves. First off, there is a tendency for the market to retrace between one third and two thirds of the first impulse to the downside. The Retest, if it does come, tends to not happen immediately after the first impulse low. Why? Because into that bounce, everyone hedges. If everyone hedges, then it's very difficult for the market to go down. Once those hedges are burnt off, and it usually takes about one options expiration cycle, then we can go and retest the lows. What other kinds of themes are predictable here? First off, bear market rallies are just as aggressive as the sell-offs. If you don't think you can make money getting long during these pullbacks, um, well, you can. It's very possible. Um, the it, It's also much more difficult to short a market into the hole when uh, everyone thinks that Western capitalism is about to fail. So think about what, what's happened in the markets recently. Right, We've seen this strong move to the downside. The market has retraced about half of that move. Right, Yesterday, we saw a 5% rally. You can still make money both sides, both to the long side and the short side. Okay, it's very possible. Next thing to understand, oh, we'll do another example. Let's say you did trade 2008. You could have made money long 2008. You just had to be aggressive. These counter trend rallies were well over 10% each. They were 15 to 20%. The counter trend bounces were very aggressive. What that also means is that even in 2008, you had multiple chances to rehedge or close out some positioning after these massive bounces. Even in the deep depths right here, there were massive moves. Okay, the best example, I think the market finished up. We saw there was one weekend where um, the, the federal government's banned short selling. Of course, we know what's going to happen if the market, if the Fed banned short selling, you know, the market sells off, but not before a massive gap higher. You had plenty of times to unload. Now, <laughs> we talked about unknown unknowns and how it can cascade to different things. Back in 2007, 2008, people were like, okay, this is going to affect the housing market. 
And the next unknown was like, how bad is employment going to get? And then the next thing was, uh, are banks going to still be liquid? And then the next thing was, is the system going to collapse? Because money market funds were locking up, right? Very, very liquid money market funds broke. Okay, so there was this cascade. The question is now in our narrative in 2020, what kinds of cascades can we see? Is it going to be COVID's killing people? And then it's going to move to how bad of a supply chain issue is it going to be? And then the next cascade could be what's the demand like? And then the next cascade is, uh, is unemployment going to stay sub 3%, right? That, that is a normal flow for this kind of market. Um, the next thing, volatility tends to be viable. All right, I'm going to stick my neck out here again because there's a lot of option gurus who are only option net short, right? They are dogmatic with the strategies they choose. I am not. I think you can make money being a net option buyer. I think you can make money being a net option seller. I think it does also depend on the underlying environment. Now you go out and you look and you say, oh God, the VIX is at 50 right, which is what it hit on Friday. You say the VIX is at 50, um, that's a great time to sell premium. Yeah, maybe if you're selling puts because the, the main mover on your trade is are you bullish or are you bearish? You could have made just as much money buying calls. You could have made just as much money buying straddles. Here's an example from last week where if you had gone every single day and you had gone two weeks out and bought a straddle, right? You're making money on the next day. This one was a small loser. This one was a massive winner. This one is a good winner. Um, the 299 straddle probably would have made money during the overnight or over the weekend. So don't be dogmatic here. It's You don't have to be net short every single time. It's not easy to always sell premium into high volatility instruments. This is especially true with delta neutral. I know I'm getting a little bit more advanced, but delta neutral trades like um, butterflies and iron condors and calendars, if you just start straight delta neutral, you have a massive amount of upside risk on those trades because bear market rallies are just as aggressive as the sell-offs, all right? So it is easier to start trading the range and thinking about what kinds of setups you can do in the options market to align your risk and reward with the best kinds of odds. Another good example, all right? So we'll we'll hop over really quick and we're gonna take a look at this, right? The VIX, the VIX on Friday traded at 48. It's currently trading at 41 right now, very, very high VIX. And you say, oh, that, that makes VXX just a really good fade here, right? The VXX was at 50 on Friday and the, the VIX was at 50, the VXX is trading much, much higher today. Why is that? Because the normal decay that we see in VXX is actually flipped, all right? So this is, again, very advanced, but the March, op, the March future has a much higher value than April, which actually makes VXX work really well. In fact, you can pair long SPY calls against VXX calls and you have a wonderful synthetic straddle, okay? Don't fall into the trap of thinking high vol means sell vol. Because what many option traders forget is that there is the risk priced into the market and then there is the actual risk in the market. <laughs> when you see 5% rallies in a single day, honestly, a VIX above 30 is justified. Okay. Some more trading themes. Markets will come back. Not all stocks will. <laughs> so if you are trading reversion strategies, you probably want to focus on very liquid instruments and probably focus a little bit on relative strength. All right. So the SPY, the diamonds, the Qs, the IWM, all of those are going to be good trading instruments into capitulation. Trading very liquid names, you know, the FANG stocks. Uh, things like that will work, but it's not guaranteed that these stocks are going to continue to not suck. Back in 2014 and 2015, there was an oil supply shock where the futures market on crude got so overblown that 
when you took delivery of oil at Cushing, Oklahoma, if you go trade crude oil futures, right, your delivery point, if you do hold those futures through expiration, your delivery points in Cushing, Oklahoma, they ran out of storage space because fracking had become such a big deal that it broke the oil market. And then we had a crash. Well, here's ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is far away from the current capitulation low from 2014. Just because markets bounce doesn't mean all your stocks bounce. Maybe there are some name brand stocks that have exhibited a lot of momentum and have pulled back. There's no guarantee that those suckers are going to continue to work. Think about past momentum names like a GoPro would be a good example where it was doing very, very well in, I want to say 2014 and it hasn't gone anywhere since. That kind of idea is going to be something to look forward to because if you are looking to buy a dip in the market when the market is capitulating, that doesn't mean that every single stock is going to move with the market. And this is the big one. You get paid to provide liquidity to the markets. Right now, because the markets are moving so fast and they're so whippy, there is um, a very wide bid-ask spread. And if you take some of your favorite ideas and you say, what would be the perfect price for me? And then you just float those orders out there and you say, there's no way I'm going to get filled on this put spread sale because the market is uh, firm and you know the market sell off, it, it may or may not happen. Odds are you're going to get filled. Same thing on call buys, scaling in on call buys and put buys using put calendars, using credit spreads and scaling in on those and providing liquidity. You are able to get in and out very quickly for fast profits without a ton of risk. All right, if you do have cash and if you are liquid, you are in a very good position. Okay. Here's what I want you to do next. This is something that I made where I went back through the past 15 years and I looked at all the major market corrections and I put together a field guide to market pullbacks and it will give you very quick access to all the data you need to make better decisions when volatility is running hot. This is a free guide. After you pick up the guide, there's going to be a training video on what I think are three major myths about market sell-offs. And you can watch that. And there is an opportunity to purchase one of my courses. The guide is free. Um, it is very valuable. It is something that I personally reference when I'm looking at my trade setups as well. So if you want to get access to it, just send your name and email to this URL, investingwithoptions.com forward slash guide. Enter your name and email into that and you will get full access to what I think is one of the best resources I've ever made where I use it, my clients use it, and a lot of other people, thousands of other people have picked it up as well. And I think it will help you become a better options trader. All right, that's it. That's all I want to talk about today. Um, I hope you all are trading safe. I hope you are making money in this market. If you aren't, come talk to me. I'll see what I can do to help you out. This is a very dynamic and fluid situation. These are also my favorite kinds of markets to trade. They're a lot of fun. You can make money both to the long side and short side. You can make money buying vol, selling vol, structuring your risk properly will get you a significant edge in the market. All right, so I think I talked fast enough to get everyone caught up and I think we're back on time. So unless there are any more questions, I'm going to sign off and go get back to work. How does the monitor look? Can everybody see me well? Please allow me to see the questions. Amazing. Hello, traders. My joy and pleasure being with you on this historical week.
Thank you so much, Anna, for having me. Let's start, shall we? <clears throat> I will take a look at the questions right after presentation, traders. So please allow me to present. Please prepare your questions, and I look forward to your questions after presentation. Let's start. Hello traders, this is Ala Peters, founder of Fibonacci Trading Institute and proprietary Alpha Fibonacci method. In this webinar, I will be sharing how to trade market crashes and rallies with Alpha Fibonacci system traded on Wall Street. But first, I would like to remind you, every single thing you will see in this webinar is not financial advice. I'm not investment advisor, not registered with any of the government authorities. I am strategy developer, I am mentor, I develop software and I coach and mentor traders all over the world. All the products presented in front of you for educational purposes only. Software demonstrated as is, past performance does not guarantee future results. And of course you understand the risks involved in trading no matter what instruments you trade. And all the performance that you will see from students from today and many weeks and months before does not guarantee anyone else's performance. So please understand it's absolutely required disclaimer. I've been doing this for the last 10 years. So in this webinar, we will cover about Alpha Fibonacci system, how to take advantage of market crashes and rallies with Alpha Fibonacci system. We will address multiple examples from day to position trading. And you will see how Alpha Fibonacci traders trade and how you personally can take advantage of market crashes and rallies with Alpha Fibonacci system. So briefly about myself, I hold multiple degrees. I speak multiple la languages. Since my 20s, I've been investing in real estate and stock market in multiple businesses. By the time I was 30, I made my first million. 2004, I was introduced to Fibonacci. I became obsessed. I started seeing very, very clearly that market is Fibonacci puzzle and market will override anything and everything with Fibonacci alone. 2008, market crash. I developed my first strategy, witnessing the response in the markets, confirming the power of alpha Fibonacci reversals, which in a play in current markets. 2011, I found Fibonacci Trading Institute and Fibonacci Trading YouTube channel that has thousands of videos. I mentor traders all over the world. I mentor Wall Street firms. I work with top hedge funds on the planet. I work with traders in 57 countries. And you will see what played out this morning in our trading room. I present at hedge fund events. I write and invest utilizing Alpha Fibonacci system. I travel the world meeting with students. In front of you, you see students in California, in Florida, in Switzerland, in Middle East, and in Asia. All of this only in the last two years. Every single student becomes my dearest friend for life. I love what I do. Family of the student in front of you, Sam, his daughter finished Harvard. Sam put his daughter through Harvard using Alpha Fibonacci trading system on options. Sam lives in Lebanon. His daughter finished Harvard. Victor, trading Forex long term. Caroline, day trader in Dallas. Mike, Sacramento option trader, William, New York. This is a team of option traders and day traders. Every trader has their own stories students, my friends for life, using complete semi-automated system with multi-market scanners and proprietary Alpha Fibonacci software. So let's take events of this week, shall we? And let's see what Alpha Fibonacci traders have done. Here's a post since yesterday and today. As we are in historical markets, as we are in historical formations. And you can read and see what students do. On top, you see post from Mark. Marco just joined us from North Italy. Marco absolutely obsessed and loving all that he sees with software and with a course. 
As you can see, yesterday he's trading oil, this morning he's trading S&P. Later, Jin confirms 25 points on S&P, Brad 32 points on S&P. Jin is thanking me for teaching execution. What was playing out yesterday? Do you remember, traders? Let's review. How is it possible that on such challenging and difficult markets, Alpha Fibonacci traders do so well? This is institutional chart. Alpha Fibonacci proprietary long-term strategies been present in the trading room for months. For months, we identified that this is where we expect sell-off from. For months, we identified that this is institutional bottom, where S&P skyrocketed from. So what was so interesting yesterday morning? What was so shocking? And why did I bring up to your attention yesterday morning? because before market opened, we were here at critical support. We expected sell-off despite rates being dropped. How is it possible? It's such a bullish news. We expecting sell-off. S&P collapse more than 100 points. Rates cut did not mean a thing. Alpha Fibonacci reversal zone identified days in advance meant a lot more as price reverses from these levels 80 plus percent of the time. On the news last week, February 20th, what is the headlines? Market in free fall. Where is the price? At Alpha Fibonacci bullish trend inception. Intelligent trader looks to buy as low as possible. Bullish trend inception at ultimate low. Unfortunately, yesterday morning not at ultimate high. Bullish news is meaningless. Market selling off. This morning we're discussing. We expecting 2600, 3000 as a crucial number on S&P, 26000 as a crucial number on Dow. We identified this days in advance. This is the power of Alpha Fibonacci system, all in advance, never after the fact. What are the headlines right now? If you're looking at CNBC or Wall Street Journal, Dow in free fall, one of the worst days ever, Dow tanking thousand points. So if I'm looking on Dow right now, what's in front of you traders? Pretty please do tell me. This is where Dow skyrocketed from yesterday morning, correct? 26,000 number. We discussed this well before. This is critical as we discussed how crucial this area to the upside this morning. Strategic intelligent trader well prepared. In this extreme markets, you will see not just spectacular sell-offs, you will see vicious bullish rallies. And that's exactly what playing out this historic week. We expected bullish rally from institutional bottom. We expected sell off from Alpha Fibonacci reversal zone, and that's identical formula. If you trade 515 daily, weekly, or monthly, accuracy remains the same. All in advance, never after the fact, no matter what you trade. And what SP will do next at this resistance present in front of you will determine S&P for the rest of the day. This was the trading range we identified well before this played out. And this is a post since this morning. This is a class I was teaching an hour ago. So when Gene shares that he's trading vertical options for the last two days, holding total 600 points on AMD, XBI, QQQ, SPY, IWM, and Emmanuel's wife just started the course. Emmanuel brought his wife to the course. Brett's three and a half points S&P, less five points. David, 12 on oil. Marco's second week. If these traders can do it, so can you in this spectacular crushes and rallies, doing this, utilizing strategic, precise institutional trend system that removes speculation and allows trader to play markets as strategic 
Alpha Fibonacci chess across all instruments. So let's take a look on Apple, shall we? Let's take a look what Apple is doing right now. This is Apple in the last five years. Do you remember Apple at 93? This is crucial Alpha Fibonacci support, the end of the minor trend, critical support. What do I say at Hedge Fund Convention? And what do I announce on social media classes and LinkedIn profile? I say the most crucial thing to see if Apple would respect this support. Apple skyrockets until next resistance doubles in value. Reaches the end of the minor trend. What do you see ahead next? Alpha Fibonacci level reached. And when Apple reaches Alpha Fibonacci reversal zone, identified months and years in advance, everyone expecting sell off that exact same level where all indexes sold off from this week. Identical traders. This is exact same level on S&P yesterday after rates cut. If you're trading one, two, three, four, five, any minute chart, it's identical price action. Charts are twins. What do you see at the bottom? Bullish trend inception, 140 level. And that's what Apple does. Crushes until it reaches ultimate low. This is a reason students become ideas friends for life. This becomes not speculative. This becomes strategic trading. So what does Apple do now on this beautiful March 5th? Shall we take a look? This is what Intelligent Trader prepared for. Bullish rally from 140 reached Alpha Fibonacci reversal zone. This is the reason for Apple sell off. We identified this months in advance. This is crucial support on Apple traders 260. This is your critical trading range. What is the first crucial steps? If you day or position trade, bullish rally on Apple overextended, Apple in bearish correction. All identified many, many months in advance. This is a stunning bullish trend inception from 140 level. And if I go back to S&P or I go back to Dow, charts are twins with Apple. Ultimate low. February 28th, March 1st and 2nd. This is ultimate reversal zone where Apple is now. What is the difference? Apple holding support, S&P and Dow did not. If you can trade one, you can trade them all. So if I bring up to your attention this chart on Dow, Price action on Dow is exactly the same as on Apple. Software identifies hours in advance. This is crucial support, do not short. This is crucial resistance, do not buy. But if I convert this chart to daily, weekly, and monthly, price action will remain the same traders, identical. What is the difference? Risk management and trade whole time. Price is exactly the same. So if you can trade price on one instrument, if you pay attention to pure price, you can trade any instrument you choose. Pure price and Fibonacci, all that matters. Nothing else needed ever. And that's the power of the method. All identified in advance on long-term charts, days, weeks, months, and years, on day trading charts, minutes and hours in advance across all instruments. Alpha Fibonacci system consists only of two components, indicator free price and proprietary Alpha Fibonacci retracements. Nothing else needed ever across all instruments as you saw on day trading dow on day trading s p opposition 
trading apple. So this is the last few days in the trading room. So you can see what other traders trade. Every single one of these traders been trying for many, many years until they came to Fibonacci Trading Institute. Traders supporting each other, traders trading S&P, Emmanuel, Dow 40 points, David Oil 22 points, Gene keeps updating us on options, Food on S&P, QQQ, SPY, IWM, Facebook 350 points. And that's what Gene says at the bottom. With so much volatility, every move must be planned. As Allah says, trade like sniper and then execute. Jean is oil executive retiree in Texas and Scotland. Leslie, Canadian trader, 23 points on Dow, James, 30 points on Dow. Emmanuel, Steve, as you can see, every trader's story, extremely powerful. Every single trader tried for a very long time until they found Fibonacci Trading Institute utilizing Alpha Fibonacci trading system on S&P E-mini future, trading from resistance when software identifies stop, entry and targets. It is absolutely essential to recognize that Fibonacci is the only natural predictive sequence that has precise synchronicity and has absolutely nothing in common with indicators. So throughout the webinar, we will be monitoring S&P traders. Throughout the webinar, we identified crucial first step. This is chart on S&P. If I would take a look on this tool, this is not tool for indicators. This is tool for Fibonacci. There is no indicators here, nowhere to be found. So please never confuse Fibonacci with indicators. Knowing how to use Fibonacci is the key. Placing Fibonacci without knowledge is not an option. And that's what's in a play this week. And that's what's in a play now. Crucial support identified days in advance. This is your trading range. Buying into this, not an option. Success rate buying into resistance less than 20%. Monitoring this crucial support is what intelligent trader does, never shorting into. And if I convert this chart to five, that's exactly what's playing out now. Intelligent trader well prepared intelligent trader not speculating not gambling in this market intelligent trader strategizing very very carefully key support in a play on s p key resistance in a play on dow i will continue updating you on this charts as exact same accuracy applies on daily weekly monthly what you see in front of you in live markets now. Alpha Fibonacci trading system identifies precise entry stops and targets in advance with institutional trend inception and reversal. On day trading charts, minutes and hours in advance on long term charts, days, weeks, and months in advance. Let's take a look on more examples. Shall we? Here's a chart on Amazon. Here's the Amazon in 2018. Amazon stock mid trend. Take a look, please, very, very carefully. This is where S&P and Dow now. All playing out in front of you in live markets. Identical mid range identical levels. Do we agree? We knew that this is crucial support, not the place to short. Well, before market opened this morning, it's in a play in front of you right now. Intelligent trader looks to buy from support, 
not into resistance. We agree? And that's long-term Amazon Weekly, identical price action. What's ahead on Amazon? Alpha Fibonacci Reversal Zone, as you saw, 216 on Apple, 2000 on Amazon. There is no bad news on Amazon, none are present. Earnings are stellar and flawless. So why in the world is Amazon crushing? In 2019, $700 per share, is it possible? Because price reached Alpha Fibonacci Reversal Zone as it's done on S&P and Dow this week, after spectacular bullish news and rates being lowered? What's more accurate? If trading on the news and earnings worked, every person on the planet would be Bill Gates. It does not. S&P crashes $700 per share and then does so again. In 2019, crashes another $300 per share. So where's Amazon skyrocketing from, traders? Let's take a look on Amazon. And let's remember this chart. And what Amazon doing now? And what is S&P doing now? It's all the same, traders. Here's a chart on Amazon now. Amazon skyrocketed from Alpha Fibonacci support. Amazon sold off from Alpha Fibonacci reversal zone, all identified years in advance. Day trading, not your cup of tea. Use everything for long-term position trading. That's the power of Alpha Fibonacci system. That's the reason I work with traders on Wall Street firms and leading institutions. They are not interested in day trading. Little money interested in day trading that's playing out in front of you, doing exact same thing as S&P had done. S&P already up 10 points since we started discussing this bullish rally. The only difference between two, risk management and trade hold time. In day trading, you're holding your trade a couple of minutes. In position trading, you're holding your trade days, weeks, and months. Scanner giving me alerts, system, in a play in live markets in front of you right now. Intelligent trader knows where to place a stop. Intelligent trader knows where targets are. And if you trade any other chart, identical power applies. Let's go to three, shall we? Love, 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 when this is playing out in live market. And if we go to one, identical formula applies. This is the power of the system. You decide what you want to trade. The concept of buying from support and exiting at key Fibonacci levels will remain forever. S&P in the live markets, Dow in the live markets. Twin charts with Amazon long term. That's the power of the trading system. If you can trade one, you can trade them all. Bullish rally from support 1700 skyrocketed until 2200. All identified in advance. This is how Amazon looked in the months of November 2019. Nothing else can identify reversal zones in advance. Alpha Fibonacci can. Choice is yours if you're trading 1, 5, 15 minutes, S&P and QDAO futures. Choice is yours if you're trading cryptocurrency, euro or apple or pound or gold. Alpha Fibonacci traders trade them all. Now I work with traders in Florida, New York, in Middle East, in Malaysia, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, first student. In London, in Kuwait, in California, from few thousand dollar account to seven eight figure account, you decide what you want to trade. It is that simple. So Jeff is one of the legends in the course. Why Jeff is 76, ex-professional biker, very passionate about ski. 
Jeff lives in Vermont, finished course in 2018. Once in a while, he stops by and updates us on his performance. This is what he posted recently. He said he was in profit on Costco, 85%, on Apple, 40 on Microsoft, 120 As he says, pay attention to what Allah says, buy low, sell high at targets. Jeff has zero interest in day trading. Every trader decides for themselves what they want to trade. We've already gone over Amazon example. And here's another example on Dow. Precise entry, stop and target. No speculation here. Market synchronicity is present. Take a trade. Do not speculate. Buy from support and remember to exit when price reaches alpha Fibonacci reversal zone. As you can see on this long, Dow collapsed 40 points instantly. So let's take a look on crucial alpha Fibonacci step, shall we? And what's essential to do before the start of your trading day. It is absolutely crucial to identify your trading range. Without this, you cannot trade. Every day, trading range will vary. Every day, due to the difference in market conditions, you will either have spectacular trading range or very poor one. Last few weeks is a perfect example when every single day, trading range will vary. So when you come to the charts and the price at institutional bottom, what is a headline on S&P? Market in pre-fall. What is intelligent trader knows? That this is ultimate low and you have exponential trading range and you have opportunity to buy with institutions it's a spectacular, it's a dream day when S&P was at 2850. This is where intelligent strategic trader looks to buy ultimate low, flawless, stunning start of a bullish rally. This is very different day yesterday morning. Nothing in common with day before. Intelligent trader knows that. This is completely different afternoon. Know your trading range. It's crucial. It's the most important number one step which we identify before market open. And as you're witnessing, this in a play in front of you right now. This is your trading range. Did we know or did we know that this would be a key resistance on Dow? Of course. Dow hanging for dear life. And if I convert this chart to one, identical formula applied. All identified days in advance, never after the fact. Buy as close as possible to support, not into resistance. But if I walk down memory lane on S&P, take a look at what played out with exact same decision point two, crucial support, during bearish correction that lasted three years. 2014, 15, 16, ultimate support, 1800 number, bullish trend inception on weekly chart. What do you see ahead? 2800 number, correct? So if I skip three years forward, do you remember bearish correction 2018? Is anyone surprised? We knew it years in advance. But if we take it step by step, one step at a time, this is the power of the method. Buyers step in from ultimate low on weekly. For six months, price is struggling at the end of the minor trend. The election night, strategic alpha Fibonacci traders know not to short, but to buy the markets. Price reaches next target. This is exact same level where Dow is struggling now. And when bullish rally goes on until alpha Fibonacci reversal zone, 
there is no surprise. It was flawless, bullish rally from 2016. 2018 was brutal, brutal bearish correction. So what ended this brutal correction? Market sell-off that reached Alpha Fibonacci, bullish trend inception. Shock or not, ultimate symmetry in the market ultimate support 2300 number that was ultimate resistance 2017 this is exact same level in front of you right now on dow traders that you saw on s p weekly it's all the same the only difference if you're holding your trade five minutes five hours five days five weeks or five months choice is yours price remains the same it will never change all in front of you in live markets key support remains respected and if i go back to s p one minute chart what do you see Starting in flawless reminder, does not matter that the headline down three four thousand points. My goodness, is it possible? S and P skyrocketed twenty points. Is it possible? How many points did Dow rally since we started webinar? Shock or not? Dow is up from two hundred fifty points. During bearish markets, you will deal with vicious, bullish rallies, all playing out in front of you now. There is no surprise. Price remains the same, no matter what you trade. No, your trading range. So this was a dream trading range. Why? Everyone was done within few minutes of market open. 9.32 EST, two minutes after market open. Market at bullish trend inception. Less is done on Dow, 26 points. Rob, 15. Brett, three points. S&P, Emmanuel, 30 points. Dow, 20. Workday, less than two minutes. When market giving you stellar institutional bottom with flawless range, your work there should be only a few points, only a few minutes with many, many points. And that would make a world of difference if you obey that very first crucial step. So let's take a look on oil, shall we? What's happening on oil now and what played out on oil in the last five years? I have charts going back many, many years, thousands and thousands of charts. Here's oil, 2015 oil in free fall. Do you remember oil at 112? Do you understand how crucial this resistance is right now in front of you on Dow? It's all the same, except this is monthly chart. You're holding position on oil for years. You need to understand how crucial this target is. So when in 2016, oil reaches ultimate bottom, what does intelligent trader do? Looks to buy as low as possible. So when oil starts skyrocketing, intelligent trader is not surprised. Intelligent trader buying the bottom. And when oil finally breaks through the end of the minor trend, oil more than doubles in value. Taking a pause. At exact same crucial decision point two level for many many months. Oil collapses completely from reversal zone as expected, identified months and years in advance. What is holding sell off on oil? 64 ski support. So when the ski support is out, oil in pre fall. And what do I say? 55 is next after 64. And when 55 is out, oil in free fall. Skyrocketing from 40 level. Shall we take a look on oil now and what's playing out and why it is so powerful? Here's oil now, trader. 
Let's take a look on oil now. Oil at ultimate institutional bottom. So not to bore you with thousands of screenshots to get to oil now. Just to remind you, this is where oil crashed from, ultimate high. This is where oil reached, crucial bullish trend inception, correct? So let's take a look on oil in the last few months, shall we? Oil at 54, critical support in the month of February. Heading lower. The world is in panic. What does intelligent trader know? It's a stunning opportunity to buy. So what is happening on oil? Oil in free fall, horrific bearish news, triple oversupply on oil. So how is it possible that despite bearish news oil rallies? Simple it reaches alpha Fibonacci reversal zone. If trading on the news worked, everyone on this planet would be Bill Gates. It does not. Oil rallying despite bearish news, as expected, it reached ultimate institutional bullish trend inception. Since triple oversupply of oil, how many points did oil skyrocket? 400 points, traders. Do you want to trade on the news or do you want to pay attention to the price? There's been stunning lessons during this historical week. So if you know where ultimate institutional bottom is, if you know where institutional resistance is, you have phenomenal opportunities in this market. It's exact same thing Dow have done. News is blaring, horrific worst day in history since 2008. Intelligent trader knows its ultimate support. Just like intelligent trader knew that this would be critical resistance. Take a look, what playing out? There is no surprise, not the place to enter into, the place to exit your long short from resistance, do not enter long into resistance. Do not buy Dow and S&P randomly because rates are lowered. How many points did Dow collapse since rates been lowered? 800 points plus. As oil rallied, 400 points plus, despite triple oversupply of oil, extremely bearish news and that reminder price action remains the same so if you know in advance where bullish trend reversal bullish trend inception is you trade the price you ignore the news as intelligent strategic trader will do pay attention to news only due to volatility and forever obey ultimate bullish trend inception. Never, ever, ever short into. It's a crucial alpha Fibonacci rule that remains forever. Second key step, as we already addressed multiple times, strategize as institutional traders do identify institutional trends and ranges. With clear knowledge of this, institutional trader trades only with institutional power and spending very little time in front of the screen. So when on the news we're receiving spectacular economical news, what do we know? On the chart, Dow reached Alpha Fibonacci reversal zone. This is what's been posted in our trading room for weeks. If Dow will crash through 25,000, we need to brace ourselves. We're seeing the sell-off that we never seen since 2008. 25,000 is lifeline on Dow. 25,000 is down, 22,000 next. 
22,000 is out, 18,000 next. 18,000 is out, 15,000 will follow. All identified in advance, never after the fact. So no matter how spectacular news is, no matter how spectacular economy is, price collapses from alpha Fibonacci reversal zone 80 plus percent of the time. That's the power of the method. And if you trade one minute chart or five minute chart, it played out multiple times this week. That's the only difference. Trade whole time. And that's what strategic intelligent traders do taking advantage of institutional levels. When institutional levels are present, a manual 20 points, Gary supporting a manual. Khalid, first day in the class. Shocker. Khalid view videos in our video library and well prepared. This is community of positive strategic traders. Jean is thanking me that I taught him how to fish. My new targets are reached. Jerry, 10 points. S&P, Rob, 18 points. Everyone celebrating intelligent trading from institutional bottom. That's the reason I love what I do as students, my friends for life, utilizing crucial third key step. Synchronicity is keyword to successful trading. If you're trading with scanner, synchronicity is crucial. You never, ever, ever take random unsynchronized trade. When synchronicity is present, you're trading with institutional volume without need to stare and flip the charts time and time again. That's how scanner looks like. Right now, market is quiet. Scanner is quiet. If scanner will light up, I will bring up the chart. And if with a single click, I will decide to add another instrument to scanner. Nothing is a problem. Would you like to add oil? Please do, single click. Would you like to add gold? Please do, single click. Nothing is a problem. You decide what you want to add. It's black and white traders. Every trader trades different instrument. Scanner removes the need of speculation. Scanner removes the need to flip the charts and chase the markets. Also give you opportunity to set alert functions. Four key step. Be surrounded with community of supportive traders. It's incredible to be with community of like-minded traders. Steve, biggest compliment ever. Best private session yesterday. I love FTI. Melts my soul. Mind you, thanks, Allah. Another good session. Good night. Lisa, Stephen, NASDAQ, any instrument, any trade. And if you're looking at geography of traders, less Calgary, Carl, Wisconsin, Manu, Kuala Lumpur, Sanjeev, Dubai, Mustafa, Saudi Arabia, Pennsylvania, Canada, Ventura, Denver, New Jersey, Florida, Toronto, Carolina, Phoenix, representing all continents, all countries now. And when students thank me forever, it's very, very common. Thousands and thousands of emails in the last 10 years. I love what I do because of my incredible, incredible Alpha Fibonacci traders who support each other. This is what played out in the last two days of February. As you know, it was extremely challenging market. Traders doing extremely well. Jim continue reporting options. Emmanuel and Dave and Gary killing it. And Jean says, operate as a sniper and then execute. And then thanking me more and more for class. Very, very typical. Here's another example of the trade on gold future. Precise entry, precise top, precise targets. 
We scan our synchronicity. It's extremely powerful and stress-free trading. We already gone over Apple. Here is Pound. Sell off on Pound from 2100 2008. Reaches Alpha Fibonacci support. Pound respecting crucial support for seven years. So when I work with prof, prof, uh, hedge fund traders, they're holding position for a long time on Forex. 3600 was crucial on pound. So 2016 Brexit, pound collapses finally. So why in the world is pound rallying? Is it possible because pound reached Alpha Fibonacci support as you're witnessing right now in front of you on S&P and Dow? 2400 level on Dow, where Dow rallied from. Has anyone seen good news in Britain? It's Brexit traders, but it's bullish trend inception. And when pound reaches this bullish trend inception again, 2019, it stages another rally again. There is no surprise where buyers coming from. Ultimate bottom is a place to buy. Shall we take a look on pound now and what pound have done? from ultimate low, here's pound. Pound skyrocketed from 120 area all the way to 135, where pound been selling off. Pound finding support in exact same place as S&P and Dow now. There is no good news in Britain, is there? So why in the world did pound rally? thousands of points. Done exact same thing as Apple from 140. Done exact same thing as oil from 30. It's all the same traders. When price at ultimate low, look to buy. When synchronicity is present, enjoy your trade. Massive, massive opportunities this week on S&P, Dow and NASDAQ at ultimate low. Dow in exact same place in front of you now at crucial support we've been watching for days and if i go back to this chart on dow and if i convert this chart to five what do you see ultimate support and ultimate resistance remains we knew so days in advance as we knew that alpha fibonacci reversals are not the place to buy the place to short from. And that remains intact. If you trade one to three for five minute chart or if you're trading weekly, it will never leave. It will forever remain the same, all in advance, never after the fact. Safivsky step, get a mentor and a quality system with life classes. I've been doing so for the last 10 years. You can see nothing but gratitude, nothing but amazing energy with my students. My new brilliant mentor, Emmanuel, supporting all of one in a billion. It really, really makes me blush with emails and love and respect I receive from those who are making an effort. I love what I do, traders. Life becomes a vacation if you love what I do. Students, my friends, for life. Alpha Fibonacci Lifetime License comes with multi market scanner, trade tool, pivot finder, no gap range bars, and range bar maker. This is what trade would look like with entry, stop, and targets. You can also set up email and phone alert options. And if you decide to trade any markets, pretty please do. With trade recognition and multi market scanner, you will trade with consistency, confidence, precision, and clarity. Any markets you choose. Brad is a legend in the course, he's inspiring others. Huge, huge, huge support for so many traders. Why? You can see videos on the reviews. So if I come to our page where we're constantly uploading new updates, this is what you can see. 
community of traders. Brett tried for 20 years prior. This is what he's done. This is serious effort. Sanjeev, trading very different instruments. Steve, trading cryptocurrency. Wolfram, melts my soul when he sends me this from his wedding, trading Forex. Students winning Forex competitions. Students trading anything they choose. And if you would like to listen to podcasts, you can certainly do so under our podcast channel. And if you would like to come to Facebook reviews, you can see much more. Every trader has their unique journey. Every trader shares their struggles and their success stories. And there is absolutely someone who just like you struggled and accomplished incredible, incredible stories. <clears throat> so emails like Mark, what as he says, has been the best training in trading I've ever had, and I've been at this for 25 years. Again, thousands and thousands of emails like this. Jerry was one of the most skeptical traders ever. Why? I don't blame him. He spent over 100,000 before he found Fibonacci Trading Institute. And when he brought Steve, his friend, this is what Steve had sent me. He said, joining FIB Institute was the best decision I have ever made. That was his post in the room, I love FTI. Words cannot describe my 12 year search for consistent trading profitability is over. And when Kerry wins Forex competition, it's no surprise. This is what those who make an effort do with Alpha Fibonacci trading system. So if you decide to join us, we are offering currently incredible discount. But first, let me remind you, complete beginner trader Pablo holding the bar extremely high. Pablo started trading live after a few weeks in the course. You can listen to podcasts with Pablo. So. For limited time and limited space, we're offering the biggest discount ever, $2,000 discount because of extreme market conditions for lifetime software, lifetime market, multi-market scanner, lifetime trade recognition software with three months of group classes or six months private mentoring. If you choose the option with private mentoring, you will have access to all group classes and video library. So if you come to the website, you can find a lot more details, traders. I have only two spaces left at this fee. That's it, because of the worst market conditions. On the products tab, you can read a lot more, a lot more detail. And if you log into the website, this is what you will see. You can see AFS modules with video. And if you come to the modules, this is what it looks like, traders. We are paying attention not just extreme market volatility and reversals. We are paying attention to much, much more. We are paying attention to mindset of trader. We are paying attention to your health as overall well-being is crucial for trading success, especially in such extreme market conditions. So these are the last few videos in the last few days. You can view our video library 24 seven, live classes Monday through Thursday. You absolutely do not have to view all the videos, never a requirement. When students ask, I record, especially in such historic market conditions. So if you have any questions for me, traders, please contact me at 925-257-4298. I always look forward to speaking with you. I'll send the email to info at fibinstitute.com.
Thank you, traders. Thank you so, so much. It's been my joy and pleasure.